too. How you doing? Hey, Dad. Rob, Bob, you know, it, I, uh, good to see you. Really. It seems I, like it was two months ago we are here. Yeah. How fast that year went. Yeah. You know, the, the rumor has it that this guy has more new minerals every year than anyone else. And I kind of think that's true because I've been looking around. I'm amazed. There's some really nice things here that we got to look at. So this actually is a Jaqueto aqua from the mid-1980s. Okay. That's Let's huge. That. Yeah, for, for that locality. Size. God, it's a beautiful Crudely thing. terminated. Yeah. On the bottom. Mm. So as you know, most of them are, are that yeah, size. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Would you believe so, that? Yeah. Fantastic. What a yeah. lovely crystal. For that locality. Yeah. Be uh, so how, long large and perfect. Been, uh, that, how long has that been on the ground? I think that was the late 80s. Yeah. Okay. okay, so it's been out for over 20 years. Yeah, Steve wow. Smale owned this. So oh, okay. It was buried with him, so to speak, for 20 years. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's a sweetheart. Fantastic. Beautiful. No, it's it's a very one. it's yeah. a very meaty German one. Ooh, that's a major German yeah. thing. That yeah. isn't yeah. just good. That's, that's nice. major. Big, big fat wires like that. Holy there you cow. Because usually they're thinner, but it's got all these ram's horn, uh, very much like Konsberg. Yep. That's a wonderful thing. Well, Herba Boda, as you know, brought most of them out in the mid-90s. Okay. This was his piece. That, so, I thought it looked yeah. a little familiar. That, it's, yeah, that is, is a that, killer. Is that his, his Herb's collection? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's a major thing. Actually, I like this one, too. People come oh, yeah, in and really assume really that's a Kongsberg. And, it, yeah. and it's the same locality. No, people assume it's a Kongsberg or European because of the thickness. It's Peruvian. Peruvian. Whoa. Okay. It's, Fantastic. Now you got a specimen down on the bottom shelf that's years ago was so common people didn't yeah. bother to buy them, and that's the pink, the pink garnet. Yeah. So yeah. hard to get. You never yeah. see them anymore. Yeah, you never see them anymore. Never. They're huge. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful from, thing. From Lake Haco down in, yeah. uh, in Mexico. That's right. But this size and quality, oh, even yeah, then, yeah, wasn't that's common. Top oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's a rare, rare yeah. fine and, thing. Uh, you know, yeah, when we perfect. went down there, the, and originally those things were lying around loose on the, on the ground when they yeah. first found them. You just pick them up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Like collecting apples. You never apples. see them anymore. Well, they just Pete, disappeared. Yeah. Pete Bancroft said he got this himself in Mexico oh, in the late yeah, in the sure. late 1940s. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Then later, after the loose stuff had been picked up, if you went down there to dig, that rock was so hard. Oh, oh it was yeah. a killer. Beautiful. But, uh, yeah, I, I always loved those Great. Lake Haco garnets. These are wonderful. I love the matrix pieces. Isn't that this, one? this little guy, for yeah, instance. Yeah, perfect is, miniature. Isn't that a little jewel? Perfect miniature. Look at that. Yeah. You know, and the ironic thing, even though it's such a weird, difficult locality to get material from, yeah. because it's so far removed from access to the market, the prices are much more reasonable than what we pay huh. for the for the flood of garnets from Tanzania or right. Kenya yeah, or yeah, yeah. any These of the common really sweet. Normally, eh, fine, kyanite is nice, and, oh, you know, but yeah. you've got a kyanite here that just blows me away. I have never seen a cluster of kyanite crystals freestanding like that, not buried in matrix, that is so fine. I'll My back that gosh. Up. I'll back that up, too. I've never yeah. seen anything like that in yeah. kyanite. Yeah. Never seen anything The preparation like work that went into that thing yeah. had to be days. It's wonderful. Uh, it, you know, it... <laughs> Actually, it looked almost this good when I bought it. No kidding. Um, mm. It surprised me too. I walked away from it three times. Yeah. yeah I'm thinking, yeah. who's going to pay the, you know good money for a kyanite? It's yeah, not. Yeah. It's not what I think of as fairly, a specimen yeah, either. Fairly common mineral. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the spray, never. the spray was all exposed. It had a little more quartz in here that has been removed. Yeah. But uh, what was remarkable is there was a whole pocket of these sprays. They're all damaged. This was the only mm -hmm. one on an entire table from the pocket that, that was complete and not broken. It's just probably the best kyanite in the world. You know, it's so unusual. Well, that's you true. You just don't that's true. see this. That's, that's why. Mm -hmm. It's a common yeah. mineral, yeah. less common, needless to say, to be in balls like that. And, and they do get them in different colors, yeah. too. But this on Matrix is an exceedingly rare specimen. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And the mm. curiosity of just spotting that. It, it's it's wonderful. It's a wonderful piece. It has a nice balance oh, to it. absolutely, with the quartz like that. First of all, this little array of fluorites and, and uh, material from Illinois is just really nice. I understand it's part of the Ross Lilly collection. Right. Okay. It's, right. How did you end up with it? Complicated story. <laughs> so, you know, ever since I was a kid and I was collecting, everyone knew, well, Ross was building the best, broadest, most 
depthful collection of Illinois minerals. Okay. He figures someday he's going to do the book, someday he's going to yeah, sell yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But the day never came. Yeah, okay. He kept talking about it. And, uh, and then all of a sudden the news was out. He, he sold it. Uh, Daniel Trunchillo bought the collection, okay. as you know, and premiered the glorious fluorites at the top of it at yeah, the Denver show. Denver, yeah. But yeah. the collection was 2,200 pieces. Oh, my God. So he put out <clears throat> 300 pieces and decided he was overwhelmed with the quantity. Yeah. Um, and as well, the collection had such a breadth of other species yeah. and less expensive but interesting minerals, yeah, important that's, that's localities. That's what I see here is the variety of species yeah. that's yes. in here. Right. Just take one common mineral like galena. You know, the variety of crystal forms that galena has. Just simple yeah. cubes like back in there and this beautiful thing like here. It's, it's, a, it's a twin, I would say. Yeah, I most people yeah. aren't aware. Sure. Aren't aware galena's got that good from that. Yeah, it's yeah, wonderful. Look at that. That's one of my favorite yeah. rocks in the collection. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Isn't it's, that something? You know, it's not five figures, it's not a fluorite, mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah. it's awesome. It's a That's winner. Wonderful. It's really a winner. Yeah. Spinel twin. Sure How is. about that? Actually, and if I can show you another. Yes. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Look at that. Again, it's not a lot of money. It's just something you don't expect to see from Illinois. Yeah. Look it's a, a pyrite mm -hmm. coating mm -hmm. and partially altering from uh, fluorite. Yeah, isn't that nice? Wow. Very showy. Very different. Yeah, very showy. showy. And, and, and really unusual. I down, down below, mm -hmm. oh, there's, there's, there's two specimens. Yeah, like just that. remarkable. You know, Shattuck. being an Arizona person, I remember Shattuckite from a you know, couple of localities. That's a cut and polish But piece. come just on. Cross section. Look at this. Look at these the Shattuckites. Look at this. Good grief. They're beautiful fabulous. radiating needles. Like yeah. Yeah. In this yeah. mineral. And the, you know the, the scary thing is they're still dirty. They're just washed in water oh, yeah. lightly, yeah. so it'll be even better when cleaned up. That's now, right. are, are those out of Shinkalobi or you know, what's the locale? We don't know. These showed up at the beginning of the show. Okay. Uh, one African dealer brought them in, uh -huh. and uh, I got some. And Brian Cosner actually got the majority of the pieces okay. are with him. Uh -huh. um, took them down to the university because I thought they were shatakite on planchiite, oh, okay. but it's all shatakite with slightly <clears throat> different color compositions. Wow. Hmm. And, and no one knows the mine yet. We're working yeah. on that. Yeah. Well, it'd be, it would be in that roan antelope, antelope stretch in yeah. Central yeah. Africa. But what's interesting, if you look yeah. at this, yeah. it's yeah. actually yeah. lapidary material. Oh, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I don't know that market, but I, I imagine there's some value. Well, it's got the same structure as malachite, except yep. that it's shatakite. Right. Well, Two shelves that I find very, very appealing. The fluorites from China, and down below the uh, sulfides from China. Very, these came out last year, but these are the better yeah. specimens that I've seen. Very, very nice. The problem was getting them back from China. They started to come out at the end of 12, and the, the miners who collected them really did, unfortunately didn't have an idea of their potential value. Okay. So the first pocket was the largest. It was the end of 12, and it was mostly damaged. They scraped things off the walls. Mm. Once they were off the walls, they put them in boxes to ship them, and most of the crystals broke off, and mm. um, very few survived out of probably a 1,000 okay. pieces. And, uh, the, the bubbly crystals are jurlyite. Really? And the coating is actually a very, very thin layer of... Calcopyrite. Oh, for goodness It's sakes. not an iridescence coating huh. or an alteration. Oh, yeah, the jurlyite's a rare one. And, you know, that's an exceptionally uncommon copper mineral. Yeah. yeah. So but. this is this is from the first pocket, the okay. style. Okay. That was uh, late 2012. Yeah. And then in the spring of 2013, uh, they hit another very long extended oh, yeah. pocket that Look was about that. 50 yeah, meters. Yeah, 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 yeah. But all of this was on this very, very uh, dense rock. So I actually bought, by then I tracked it to the mine. I bought a diamond chainsaw uh, for helping mine it. Oh, okay. And the chainsaw worked for a little bit and then jammed up with the copper in the rock. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, you have a problem, That's even though then they knew the value was, was high. It was difficult to extract. Exactly. And that's this style on the big matrix pieces. Mm -hmm. But the first pocket got distributed quite widely. And honestly, if people were looking on the internet, I've heard of pieces worth thousands of dollars that were sold on eBay from China for $50, $100. I missed them, and the Chinese dealers didn't know, and some of them survived being damaged. Wow. There were bargains. Uh, These too, the same story. The first ones came out, but here, because it's fluorite and beautiful, even the Chinese actually started at higher prices than I'm selling them for, huh. uh, for the specimens. Right. But everything, it had, to, it had to be prepped and shipped back here and processed. Right. And, and again, there was another pocket 
of these by which time they needed a chainsaw to get out larger pieces. Uh, the first pocket, a lot of pieces were damaged because they didn't have that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. yeah. But let me just what show you. The colors on these are just, I notice where the, where the uh, lights can pass through the yeah. crystals like that crystal up yeah, in the corner. You see that, yeah, there it is. You see that really rich red violet color. It's marvelous. Our problem is, I'm at a show, I'm in a hotel room. Yeah. yeah. I have to work with what I have. <clears throat> so yeah. for these cases, we need too much lighting. Yeah. And we don't have enough backlighting. Yeah. Yeah, but if, light, lighting is a yeah. real fa factor when you're showing. If you're at home yeah. and your mineral case has backlighting, yeah. these yeah. glow. Yeah. That goes back to what I said before. The presentation that's being done for minerals now is so far exceeds what was being done 20 or 30 years Very ago. So. Yeah, you know, Dave, you know, in the, oh, in the old days, uh, oh. if a specimen was put out for sale, a case yes. a light bulb above. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Now, wow, they yeah. really are being treated yeah. the way they deserve to be treated. Yeah. They're respecting yeah. the quality of what the material is. Yeah, exactly. Well, you're, you're to be commended, Rob, yeah. really. You have yeah, superb uh, you know, job. You, the oh, time really. and money you have invested in bringing minerals to the general public, I think it's yeah. just great. You, you've raised the, and, and, and I've got to mention this. I did the Dallas Symposium last year, and that's coming on as Thank one you. of the great mineral activities in the United States. The speeches were great. The, the social atmosphere was the best I'd seen since the old days of Tucson. Honest to God, Very it's good. just wonderful, and I'll be there again. It, you know, it started as our grand opening party when I opened my gallery mm -hmm. four mm -hmm. years ago, right. and I never imagined it would morph into something so yeah. big and yeah. community-wide. Exactly. So well, yeah. thank you for coming. Yeah. I went to the first one, and one of the speakers was the only geologist who's ever walked on the moon. I've had, I've, Isn't that something? I've been lucky in my selection yeah. of speakers. I mean, come on, right. that's class speakers. Absolutely. Even Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's been good. Actually, the funny thing is, I'll tell you the story, and we'll put it on camera. Because uh, if, wa if it wasn't on camera, I think you'd misremember it and, d and dumb it down, so it wasn't so much a compliment to you. But it, w it was overheard. There were a couple of new collectors in the audience, some of about 220 <clears throat> people. Uh -huh. And one of my friends overheard one say to the other, Wow, Dave Wilbur's legendary. I wonder how much it, I wonder how much it cost him to get Wilbur to come here and speak. You know, I heard that in the, your party. Someone I told you that? that? It's no, they didn't tell me. I heard them talking at the corner. Now here's here's the material on on Dallas that was enclosed in the copies of mineralogical records. So if you subscribe to the to the record, you get this. No charge. It's wonderful. And it tells the whole history of, of this. There was a young lady named Monica who did most of the organizing. Yeah, I, I hired her to administer this more professionally. Yeah. She yeah. has a background in graphics design. Oh, yeah. So beautiful. Yeah, she's she's responsible uh, for the more professional look of the symposium so and the feel of it. A lot. So actually, I have most, m most of my stuff out this year, yeah, yeah. more than usual. There's not a lot hidden in back, but maybe I can show you two or three sure. special pieces. Sounds All right. Good. Sounds good. Come to my bathroom. <laughs> yeah. You'll never believe where these pyrites are from. Just incredible textbook pyrites on crystallized dolomite twins. Beautiful. Jeez, look at look that. Look at this. And these are dirty. And they're that good. This is from the Chivor Emerald Mine. Okay. You're kidding. Wow. No. I knew pyrite occurred down there. Yeah. Uh, yeah when, not I, like that. Yeah, when I was down in Columbia, I didn't get over to Chivor. I was Dave in the Moose over there. You would have owned this in a minute, right? Oh, absolutely. Right? This, yeah. this, any one of the three. Absolutely. God. So, of course, normally when they're digging for emeralds and they see pyrite, they just blast yeah. through oh, yeah, it. They're, oh, not, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, they're not interested in yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, this was a famous piece that was shown in the 90s. Oh. In the early days of Afghanistan, it came oh out. Oh my That's goodness beautiful. gracious, isn't that oh, lovely? Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. What a nice piece. With a background of Morganite. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh. that's beautiful. Mm. They call this indicolite. It is a blue, but it is indicolite. Any of the shades of blue of tourmaline, mm. albite. But this mm. has character with the Clevelandite right at the base, centered right in the uh, the smoky quartz uh, quartz mass. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. wonderful. A little bit of lapidolite nice. in there. Yeah, I thought yeah. this was morganite, but it is smoky, isn't it? Yeah, it's smoky yeah. quartz. Yeah. Um, let me pull out something out else. Yeah. I think yeah. we'll surprise. Yeah, yeah, here we come. Here. Even you. <laughs> the good stuff out of the drawer. You know what oh, that is? Oh, look at the size of that peridot. Oh, oh come man. on! Is that thing for real? Yeah. 
Now it's wow. not cleaned yet. It's a little dirty still. Yeah. But that's, the color's right. That didn't come from the island in the, the Red Sea, that's for sure. This. No. I've <laughs> never seen a larger one. Have no. you seen no. a larger one? No. I've never Nothing. seen a larger no. one no. than that. No. That is really something. Yeah, yeah. and the crystal Truly form is really good. a museum piece. So I one, that guy. One thing that's interesting is when we cleaned the off... Yeah, look at the gemminess in there. Yeah, we cleaned off the surface coating only, but it hasn't okay. been fully yeah, fully worked. It's all cutting in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you see, Not you can see you it. Can yeah, you cut them, that thing, you'll that get is, your hand yeah, cut off. Exactly. That's marvelous. Beautiful. Oh, Holy God. Got to be the I've world's never, biggest. Have you heard of a large no, one? No, I've no, never no. It's got to be the world's biggest. No question about it. So what's interesting is, again, like this piece, it came out probably 20 years ago. It was in the very early days. Of okay. Afghani minerals. Yeah. And and they just Go haven't been hit it. Yeah. seen. Yeah. Fantastic. I do have one more thing, you know, Dave. Okay. Just knowing your interests. You know, I always have something I think special sure. that you'd like. Sure. Here, hold out your well, hands I like for me. Everything you're showing here. All <laughs> your stuff is good yeah. stuff. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> now, they really did feed that guy Viagra. You know, I'm trying. <laughs> and he hands it to me. It to <laughs> I just wouldn't want you to think I forgot about you. Here, here. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. It's unbelievable. <laughs> That's marvelous. You know, for a small one, because some of these things get real big, yeah. that's a, a fine specimen for the, this sure. kind of size sure. collection. Great. His Beautiful. cheeks are turning red. Yeah, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm not. I just think it's terrific. Oh, it's a fabulous thing. <laughs> Keep up What'd the good do? work. That's great, bro. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Christoph, good to see you again. Hey, Bob, how are you? Yeah, good yeah, to fine. see you. I haven't seen you in a couple of years. Yeah. I don't know why. Just, <laughs> circumstances, I guess. I don't know, but yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> good, good, good. And you've brought some nice things, as usual. To I, have, I have been trying, as every year, to travel all around the world yeah. to try to find some good pieces for the West World I Show. Envy yeah. I envy you being able to travel all over the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. One of the specimens I noticed in this case is it's just a calcite yeah but it's from a place normally you associate with liticodite and you know you're right things Gems. like that but what impresses me not only because it's you never see calcites from madagascar is the very very sharp crystals and a nice color yeah this, this piece came came out about uh, five six years ago in madagascar okay a friend of mine is digging there and found a huge yeah. pocket of this that's, that's a twin outside. there yes yes yeah. yes yes yeah you can see the the um, contact there yeah, between yeah. the two crystals yeah. the the origin of this latest batch of azure ice is very interesting which we can talk about tell me about your experience down there <laughs> Where in Mexico? Yeah, I mean, sure. Well, it was my first time, mm -hmm. and uh, it was actually very interesting because what I like in my in my job is to travel all around the world, and when I can discover a new a new lo a new locality, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty exciting. And sure. I and sure. I went I went close to Milpillas and. Uh, I saw all the mining works all around, and it was quite amazing. Yeah, it's near Cananean, it, and yes, there's the Maria yes, mine yes. nearby. I was in Cananean, yeah. actually, yes. Okay. Did you get this from a miner? or? Um, I, I got it from one guy who is working with miners, oh, okay. actually, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, where is that from? It's from La Viesca, which is close to La Collada in Spain, okay. in Asturias. Yeah. And it's a very fine fluoride from the, from the place. Yeah, the color on those. Yes. Just yes, intense. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. They're sl looks like they're slightly zoned, some of the crystals. Yes, yes, yeah. they are. Yeah, Fairly right. uniform in size. On calcite, is that? Uh, quartz, actually. It's on quartz. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Looks. Look at this. The Adelaide mine has suddenly began, not suddenly, but in the last couple of years has really started producing absolutely marvelous crocoites. Yeah, yeah. That's huge. You know, the, the problem with the early crocoites is the matrix was so unstable mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you really couldn't do much with them. But now they've figured out how to, how to stabilize them. They've yeah. been able to get the Gibbs site off the yeah, crystals. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this yeah. is just a wonderful specimen. Yeah, actually, Adam from the Adelaide Mine Company yeah. is doing a really good job for now 
three, four years. Yeah, yeah. He, he has been mining there and he, he brought to the surface some unbelievable specimens. Yeah, yeah, he did a really good job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Blue Cat Productions has done a video, in fact, yeah, Brian you're right. went yes. underground with the camera. Yes, you're right. So the, the documentation mm -mm, of that mm -mm. mine has been really good. Yeah. And, but that's a marvelous piece. Too big for my collection, but boy, <laughs> it's a winner. There's another one just up above here on the on the third shelf. A little better, little better color maybe. Yes. But more manageable for me. Anyway. Yes, I agree. That's, that's really wonderful. Thank you. While we're on the subject of large specimens, <laughs> you've got a large quartz over here that I need to hear a lot about. This, this piece can come from the the Swiss Alps, and uh, there is a very interesting story about this Good. this rock. Good. Because the what we call the the strallers who are the climbers right. uh, yeah. who go who go for uh, for crystals in the Alps, they found um, a vug in 2010, okay. where they got few quartz, including the Gwindel on top of the quartz. Yeah, yeah this one up here. So they just found that. just the, just the Gwindel that. in okay. 2010 and few and few quartz. Okay. And then when the, the snow uh, came, they had to leave the vague for sure. the next summer. And in 2011, they climb again to the place, to the vague. Okay. And a few meters deeper in the vague, they found the big group of quartz. Okay. When they came back to the valley, they realized that there was one crystal missing on top of the piece. And then, they realized that the Gwindel was fitting oh, with the group. Gosh, I, I can show you one special. Uh, right. I've been traveling to Morocco too because there were some, some new blueberries from Nador okay. in Morocco. And I got uh, a big lot. And in this big lot, there was one very special piece okay. that I'm going to show you All now. Right, go get it. Let's say, take a look. When oh, you look see the piece that. and how fragile look it is. That. I don't know if I can get it, it that Brian. Nice. Boy, it does not look like it has any mm -hmm. damage mm -hmm. at all. No, and it's what is very nice with this piece. First yeah. is the size, the shape, the color, yeah. but also it's in very good condition. Yeah, and on matrix. On, ma yeah. on matrix, yes, sturdy. we're right. Yeah. And uh, most of the pieces were damaged ah. because they were so fragile. Yeah, understandably and, uh, so, yeah. And that one I was happy because it has the size and all, all the criteria for a good piece, but it's also in very good condition. Can you turn it a little bit? <laughs> I can sure. try yeah, if yeah. you want to see the back. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I don't. That's, yeah. Thanks. Thanks Thank so you much again. for showing me Thank all you your again, big Bob. and small pieces. That's good <laughs> stuff. Great pieces. Thank, Thank you, Brian. You. Good morning, Gerhard. Good morning. How are you well, doing? Fine. Nice yeah. to see you. You are, you. you are in charge of Marcus Boodle's... Goods? Yeah, I help him because he is not able to come by ah. himself. Oh, that's too bad. And so he asked me and I say, I like minerals and yeah. uh, I'm, they are coming. Excellent, I excellent. <laughs> yeah. You got and, oh, uh, this marvelous arrangement of crystals. Yeah, it's... Look at that. It's really I'm cool. Not I'm not going to touch it. You will not touch it. <laughs> it's not beautiful. so fragile as it looks, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. really... Uh, beautiful, beautiful green color in yeah. these crystals, no damage, beautiful. You know, when these were found, um, uh, they were pretty much uh, scattered all over the pockets, weren't they? Yeah. So this has been uh, reassembled, shall we say? Yeah, uh, the interesting thing for me was yesterday was the presentation from Daniela Trenzel oh, okay. uh, about the yeah. uh, yeah. Petanera mine. Right, right. And so I have now much more information how they found it, mm -hmm. how <laughs> many time it needs to fix the pocket. Oh, yeah, it takes and, a year uh, or more. To yeah, do so this. you see yeah. such pieces yeah. with uh, new eyes. Yeah. <clears throat> this is my dog. You, I was going to say, you have this a name. This is my for dog. <laughs> <clears throat> no, uh, the shorals usually don't get the play that tourmalines yeah. do, naturally, or, or the colorful tourmalines. A shoral, a black tourmaline is not a real mineral, but uh, this is really fantastic because yeah. it's a floater. Uh -huh. Total, you uh, see. Yeah. You can look yeah. around every side. It's crystallized. It's just gorgeous. And the form is like a dog for me. <laughs> yeah, poodle. <laughs> the really good thing on this new find is that uh, normally the Russians has uh, some brownish inside. Okay. So the okay. color is not really red. Yeah. But uh, this pocket, uh, 
looks like for me a little bit to Jonas. Yeah, I was going to say, at first glance when I looked in here, I said, oh, Jonas mine. Yeah. But, uh, and the quality for, wonderful. for Russian is, is uh, unbelievable. Oh, look at that. Yeah, isn't that marvelous? Yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. It's jammy, yeah. it has a good color. Yep. And some of them, what I like because I love tourmalines, everybody right. knows that. <laughs> okay. Is the yellow green. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Inside. Yeah. And There's a little green, yellowish hue to it. Many people think that uh, blue or red is the rear, uh, rearest color, but yeah. it's not true. The yellow, the yellow is the rearest yeah. color yeah. What yeah. you can find, and you see it's really good. It's so yeah. jammy, the luster. Yeah. It's very, great very stuff. Fine. Yeah. Uh, now I want you to show me the. <laughs> some specials? Little, yeah, some of those specials. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Oh my, look at that. Look at this and let me switch the light on. And we have a little bit more daylight inside. Oh, uh, yeah, and with, with a little matrix, that, yeah. that makes it for me. That's um, marvelous. Back. What a beautiful specimen. But look perfect, at the color, perfect, yeah, look at yeah, the luster. Yeah. High luster, perfect termination, typical striations, excellent. This is the reason, uh, because I say it looks for me like a little bit Jonas. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And uh, very rich red color. Yeah, and I have another one because I know you like Matrix like me. I'm also favorite from pieces with Matrix. So this piece will be. I say nothing. It looks oh by yourself. Oh my goodness! Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Raspberry red twins, as far as I'm concerned. And look at the it little. It speaks yeah. for itself, you know. Whoa. What a. Fun and what specimen. I like really much is the second generation right. of the tourmaline. Right. You know, right. you have right. the, the big one. Yeah. Then you have the muscovite, what is really snow white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the, the second generation yeah. of the small yeah. uh, tourmaline. Yeah. So yeah. this Those is really this is jewels. really, what yeah, a great specimen. Um, and yep. from any angle, it doesn't matter. Yep. My goodness gracious. And it's the quality. Yeah, it's so. amazing something like that survives in a pegmatite pocket. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. That's really, really mm. the best one. It is. Yeah. For me. Yeah. <laughs> look oh at this. My. Oh, look at that. Yeah. The color is just intense. This is... Marvelous. Unbelievable. Oh. I have not an idea if Brian can film that because it's so clear. I try to show it a little bit look better. At the, look at that. Gee. Yeah. That is really a superb specimen. My goodness gracious. The name is the Deep Blue, the nickname. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can see why. Oh, yeah. 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 It's a great so specimen. So it's called Deep Blue. And you have seen the, the faces? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the termination is actually more complex than some I've seen. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. So, another shocking piece. Okay, <laughs> it surprised me. Mm. Good heavens! My goodness gracious me! Beautiful I, emerald. I say that only for correctness. It's a real emerald. It sure <laughs> is. It sure is. It's loaded with chromium. It gives it that wicked green That's, color. Look at this thing, this is... Now, where is that from? This comes from Colombia. Colombia, mm -hmm. okay. Do you know the mine? Uh, the mine is the Lapita. Oh, that, oh yeah, I've the seen Lapita a couple mine. of Lapita specimens. Yeah. That's one of the mines I didn't get to. Uh, Lapita and oh. Cosquest brings the blackish, brownish calcite. Okay. So the contrast yeah. Yeah. between the emerald and the calcite it makes it... Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, the muso crystals That's come out on a white calcite, which is nice. Yeah. But the darker calcite, I think, gives it a, a much more intense setting. That's a superb crystal. I have never yeah. seen such such yeah. an emerald. Textbook form. Yeah. And you see yeah. classic color. The natural etched uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. faces oh. around. Oh, isn't that the, the man who opened the pocket that had that in must have had a shock. So oh, you have the deep blue on one side, the yeah. emerald yeah. on yeah. the yeah. other yeah. side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a good feeling. Ah. <laughs> I'm glad I don't collect gems. Jim Christmas. I love gems. That's my uh, problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Look what, at this one. Oh, isn't that nice? What a nice setting. Yep. That is really fine. Yeah. That is really special because yeah, has, has, uh, yeah, the, the yeah, is... Uh, the, yeah, the termination is yeah. certainly different from the termination on the other one. It's a little more uh, sword-like or chisel-like. It's really sweet. And the, and the uh, calcite really sets it off. That's really fine. Hmm. Beautiful. And if you display that with a little bit light... Oh my goodness. You see the true yeah, color. Yeah, really gemmy. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, personally I prefer this th over the other one, even though the other one is far more valuable, I'm sure. I know, you, you like the, matrix the, Yeah, the, the yeah? setting uh, is just, it really shows <coughs> it off. That's wonderful. Oh my. Oh my. Now is that the Russian uh, locality again? No. No? Okay. This piece comes from Jonas. Oh, it, it is a Jonas. Okay. It is a Jonas. Hard to tell the difference. <laughs> 1978. Boy, that's sweet. Yes. Yeah, beautifully, beautifully positioned. Yep. Very slight modifications on the termination. Very nice, yeah. You see them here on the corners. Really nice. Good, rich color. Yep. That's beautiful. Uh, it's, it, it always amazes me when something that beautiful comes out of the ground you know, and not damaged. Whoever dug it had to really be careful. Yep. It's really wonderful. Have a look. Boy, that is really a nice specimen. Good, good, rich color. They're the finest scalinohedral uh, or uh, rhodochrosites in the world, no question about it. Just really wonderful. Look at oh, this special gold. Really nice yes. hoppered gold. Yeah. Now where is that from? This is from Venezuela. But, oh, it's one of, and that, that's yep. big for Venezuela. Yeah. It really it's is. It's really big. big. Most of them are, you know, hmm. That's wonderful. Chevron uh, patterns in there. When you hold it up like that, it almost looks like a religious shrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a Madonna, isn't that? You nice? say Madonna. This is uh, reminds me on the um, on the rose quartz. What was in the heritage auction? This has nearly the that's same right, form. That's right. You know, that's the right. big one. Yeah, uh, forty yeah, centimeters. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was there. And when it looks a little bit from the form. Yeah, yeah. but I, I love that. That's the that's a very exciting gold. I must show you that. Okay, is in Tanzanite, but not the Tanzanite. What people know, this is a purple. Yeah, Tanzanite. The color is certainly different. Yeah, very different. Huh. Yeah. It's like a white. I don't know if this. Look at that. That is a jewel. Yeah. It really and is a jewel. Really rare. Yeah. Have you seen uh, something before? No, no. That's the first time I've seen one. Yeah. Let me look. take a look at this. Oh, my goodness gracious. That is. It's glass clear. Mm -hmm. Yep. And an absolute gem. Yep. Great it's colors. Now, where is that? is that? That looks Brazilian, but that's just a guess on my part. That is from Pakistan. Pakistan? Mm -hmm. oh, it wow. comes from Haramosh. That, 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 that exceeds yep. virtually everything I've seen from Pakistan. I think that oh, um, golly. it's... I don't know if uh, you can really see the color in the of the camera because yeah, yeah, it yeah, is so yeah. clear yeah, yeah. that it looks like really... Yeah. Look yeah. your hand. Yeah, yeah. But in this moment. Oh, look at that. Look at that intense blue yeah. termination. Look at that. You, if you had a piece of blue glass and cut it like that, it wouldn't be any more intense or beautiful than this natural crystal. Nice. Look at Very it. Very nice. Very nice setting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this piece has some specials really because remarkable. this crystals, yeah, yeah, this crystal goes inside. And if I use the now light, I put my glasses on. This, this I have I to hope see. I hope we try if we can see. Oh, that. look, look, look! You see that? Look, can you see in there that blue tip of that crystal? Right. I don't know, Is Ryan. That you see that? Yeah. Great. Holy mackerel! So it's possible that there was another crystal here, uh -huh, here. in this direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, those are the finest Venadenites ever came out of there. 
this is that from Asif um, mm, Mibladneri, of course. It's Mibladen. Yeah, yeah, uh, can yeah. You I don't know. It's Asif. Yeah. Wow. I must look. Yeah. But it's so perfect. Wonderful. The, the whole Wonderful group, stuff. crystal yeah, by crystal. Yeah, yeah, you see yeah. that? Superb Venade Nights. Yeah. It's standing up. Yeah. yeah. Tammy yeah. said it looks like a boat. Yeah, yeah, and the with, wind comes with a from great the red sail comes yeah. from the yeah. huh. back. Yeah. You know? What a piece. Yeah. Oh. This is German. No. No? No. This comes from China. This was oh. the new farm from last year. Wow. Uh, this is uh, calcopyrite mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with siderite. Cal calcopyrite on siderite. Beautiful, yep. lustrous brown yep. siderite. Yep. You can see it here. And Sticking out among the calcopyrites. Wow, boy, aren't those beautiful. The luster is intense. Sharp crystals. The piece has only one problem. Uh, what? The problem is you cannot make a good picture because it's they, try, they yeah. try to make a photo from that. Yeah. And this has hundreds of reflections. Yeah, sure. It's so, so bright. You see, you'd have to do it in a very subdued light with a long time exposure. From the other oh, look at that. Mm. This is a gold <sighs> from Brazil. From Brazil? From Brazil, yeah. Yeah, you don't hear much about gold from Brazil. Yeah, way back in the days, and then when they found that one big deposit that they open pitted. But uh, you don't you don't see any of that on the market. Mm -hmm. This is really nice. Very That's fun. the reason I, yeah. I showed that to you, yeah. because so Brazilian gold is uh, not often to see on the market. Looks like it's got, yeah, there's nice, yeah, nice cubes, yeah, some blades, another cube edge there, face there. That's that's cool. Yeah, and it's big mm, also. Yeah, more than just a nugget. That's, yeah, yeah, more. It's a nugget. Yeah. yeah, there's a few ounces there. Oh, it's an aquamarine, a barrel, ah. but we have a scepter here. Ah, look at that. I've often wondered, and I'll still wonder, how could nature do this? Grow a crystal, grow another crystal, and have it scepter like that. Yeah. Why no color here and color here? That's the question. It's Just, a good question. Yeah, and it's etched. Not enough to make it look, uh, you know, to ruin its appearance. It, the etch, etching actually gives it character. It's wonderful. So well, thank you. Thank you, Thank Gary. you. This well, has been a wonderful surprise. I really enjoyed being with you. <laughs> thank good. you. I like thank that. You. Hi, Steve. Hi, good Bob. to see you again, buddy. So nice to see you. How do you, you like it down here in a nice, warm Arizona, away from Colorado? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We've had a rough winter, as yeah, most of yeah, our yeah. colleagues up in the northeast have had. It's, yeah. been, a, it's been a brutal winter this yeah. year. Well, glad And we're here. glad to be here no, every year in Tucson. Good. You've got some new things that I want to talk about. We absolutely do, and we're excited to show them to you. Look at that gold. Isn't that an amazing gold? It's a marvelous scenic piece. And these are new production at the tail end of last year, and they are just spectacular. Yeah. Uh, they, these specimens have all gone through our lab to, to uh, remove some of the quartz that obscures right. Right. The, the gold, and uh, this particular piece is just phenomenal. It's, it's about 62 ounces of gold. Is it really? Yeah. It's, it is nice and heavy, Bob. I'll let you hold it. Yeah. What a great. And you know, you've got great crystal development here. On the on the upper part yeah. of the specimen, micro crystals all yeah, over. Micro crystals all over, and wonderful combination with the quartz vein material, as as well as some of the other country rock. There That's in the what I like about this specimen. The gold is great, but if you look at it like this, you can mm -hmm. see how the gold occurred in a narrow quartz vein in the country rock, yes. and you've etched away enough of the quartz to make this an absolutely spectacular specimen. Isn't that a beautiful Smart. piece? We well, have another one here from that same. Uh, production. <coughs> oh, this is also that. spectacular. Yeah, that's beautifully etched. Mm -hmm. Look at the way the yeah, crystallized yeah, yeah. gold has Marvelous. developed these these fans yeah. up at the up at the top of that specimen. Yeah. You say uh, a very heavy. Yeah, those quartz veins are so narrow. They are indeed it's amazing. Yep. So this is solutions that came in later and followed mm -hmm. the the cracks and veins yeah, the in the country rock. Yeah. In the country rock, and yeah. brought in the quartz and yeah. the gold. Wonderful. And and you see all of the little dendritic gold crystallization yeah, in these yeah, in these yeah, uh, yeah. leaves. Marvelous, just marvelous. Very very showy. Yeah. Mm. And the the backside, 
really has some some great luster on these crystals yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. This beautiful little sulfide mineralization oh, here as yeah, well. Yeah. You often get arsenopyrite and other minerals in association right. with the uh, right. with the gold there in Mariposa County. Look at the combination of several different minerals on one piece. Give me the history on this and how you acquired that. This piece, you see these incredible, really gemmy and lustrous pink fluorites. Yeah, yeah. And, very high uh, luster. Kind of, yes, <clears throat> and, and then you have the, the classic aquamarine from the yeah. Nagar area. And this one is really cool because you also see the little pink appetites that oh, yeah, have, have that. occurred yeah, there, yeah, just yeah, lustrous yeah, yeah. and that. very vibrant pink color in, in the uh, appetites yeah. as well. So classic tabular yeah. hexagonal yeah, another crystals, another here. big pink fluorite. Yeah. Uh, you can see some of these clusters uh, that are classic oh, yeah. from yeah, Nagar. Yeah, yeah. Just lustrous, gemmy, uh, great color for Nagar. And this one is heavily color zoned. You've got this incredible pink stripe right. that runs along this front edge and a little bit of colorless fluorite in the center and then another uh, stripe of pink on the side and now this is a that's beautiful twin, isn't it? it is a yeah. twin yeah yeah, you can see the, the twinning right here, running yes, right sir. up the length of the crystal. Beautiful Spinel Law twin, yep. uh, pink yep. fluorite, and here again from, from the gem pegmatite fields in Nagar. Boy. Just what a, a nice lovely specimen. area. Yeah. And Nagar, of course, is in the Hunza Valley in Baltistan, Pakistan. Okay. And then when you talk about green fluorite, it oh, doesn't well, get any this, better yeah. than this look, jewel look this. over here. Jeez. Here again from Nagar. So you're getting the pink from Nagar, you're getting green from Nagar, mm -hmm. and this specimen <clears throat> is just an incredible window into into the world of fluorite. Yeah, yeah, you've got yeah. you've got a, a giant modified. crystal. Yeah. Highly modified. Highly modified yeah, yeah. And, and super luster yeah. and, and incredibly gemmy. You can see all the way through it back yeah, to the matrix. Yeah, yeah. Muscovite matrix in the back. You know, look at look that. Look at that. that. Yeah, how jemmy. Wow. A little bit of pink in yeah, it on the, yeah, on the left the hand side. Yeah, look at the pink on there. Yeah, isn't yeah. that something? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what a fluorite. It is. Oh, Just gorgeous. a jewel of a fluorite. Gorgeous. And then, you know, we were talking about Afghanistan. Yeah. You have beautiful paprock tourmalines. And mm -hmm. we, we mm -hmm. for the last several years, have, have had some of the finest of the paprock tourmalines. Yeah. Uh, this one is called the Lion of Asia and just a spectacular yeah. combination specimen of smoky quartz, well-terminated smoky quartz with this beautiful bicolored green yeah, and, yeah. and red The, the uh, position tourmaline. of that is just... You lovely? couldn't have placed it any better than nature did. It's, it's a spectacular piece. Yeah, what a rock. <laughs> we have a fluorite across the room I wanted oh, to show okay. you also okay. from the Nagar Another deposit. Another impressive piece. Well, it's just so doggone amazing to me. But we have this absolutely, you can see my fingers. Oh, yeah, you can see my that. fingers up behind here yeah, as yeah, I'm moving yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. But this, And you can see the twinning point. Yep, it's a total jewel. I mean, the, you, this would... It would be a crime against nature to do it, but you could facet yeah. this into oh, a huh. into a huge no, no. No, no, fluorite no, 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 no. stone. <laughs> that that's just an yeah. incredible, beautiful yeah. light pink color, yeah. and it has this interesting uh, mm -hmm. additional growth on the surface. It had a late stage development of uh, some additional um, octahedral faces on huh. this Spinel Law oh, yeah, uh, twin yeah, yeah. fluorite, and just a just a beautiful specimen. Remarkable. Isn't that remarkable? You know, fluorites were never so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This Nagar area has been producing just some mm -hmm. real incredible jewels yeah. over the last year or two. Yeah. The temperature in, in that deposit had to be higher than the temperature that, that we're, you know, we normally see in places like southern Illinois where the cubes mm -hmm. form. That's right. This, this, this forms in a, in a slightly higher temperature well, In uh, these gem pegmatite environment. fields. Yeah, yes, really sir. nice. Well, thank you. All right. So uh, I've got one other special Somebody, one yeah, no, you know, every time we shoot, <laughs> you have such great stuff out here. I can't believe you've got something hidden in the mm -hmm. back, but we that have smile really, tells me. <laughs> oh, we have a special piece to show All you. Right, I'm glad you're here with let's us Let's take a look. All right. This is uh, one of the finest spodumene specimens that we've ever had at the Collector's <laughs> Edge. <laughs> this thing has a beautiful light pink color right. with a lovely yellow green cap on this oh, on this particular okay. uh, spodumene crystal and the the great thing about this is 
that uh, it is a matrix specimen. It's yeah, in associated. Yeah, so yeah. many times with spodumene, you see a, a crystal that's been either naturally severed from matrix mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. rehealed, or uh, something that's been broken off a of matrix. This one, you still have a beautiful terminated, uh, slightly smoky quartz with it. You have some felspar, and uh, you got these beautiful quartz in association with the incredible size spodumene. I would say this is probably 15 inches or so yeah, tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, just one of the biggest, finest, most well-formed uh, spodumene crystals we've ever had. Bird. This is another Mockingbird Mine Gold, Look and just an incredible development of crystals. Yeah, You've got yeah, yeah. highly lustrous, uh, complex gold crystals. There's some branching development to the gold here. Uh, there's, there is some octahedral development, but they look a, a whole lot like maybe some, some dodecahedral development All as right. well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, may I? Yes, of course yeah. you can. Thank you. This is brand new, last year's production. Wow. This this came to our shop to be uh, cleaned and prepared to go to go to market. And it's been etched out of the quartz it vein. It has been etched out of the quartz vein to expose the gold. Wow. Just a yeah. really super aesthetic, yeah. high quality uh, yeah. gold specimen. Well, it's great that you you know you left enough of the matrix to give it a nice positioning, mm -hmm. so when it's you know when you put it when on you the, mount it on the glass, right, right, it just stands right up there and sparkles. Yeah. I love this chain of in, yeah. highly yeah. lustrous yeah. Yeah. crystals. Isn't that something? There. Really, is just amazing. terrific. Yeah, well, this that, is a special piece. Yeah, that that tops what you've shown me. This arguably could be the single finest pink fluoride in the world. Oh, good this grief. was this piece was found <laughs> recently <laughs> in Nagar in Pakistan and uh, it's an incredible size. It's twinned. It's a twin. Not it's once. A, yeah. I think I see twinning here, here, maybe here. It's a it, it's a Spinella twin. Yeah, yeah. It's it's color zoned. It's got this incredible rich uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. red color, yeah. reddish pink color. Looking at it from above, slightly up above, you see a colorless zone. Yeah. All across the back mm -hmm. here, right there, yeah. and then the rest of it is just. A, isn't it the stunning? Richest, yeah, the it's richest, the richest pink, pink that you can get. I don't think I've ever seen a fluorite that good before. Uh, no, and and this is no big. Question. I mean, look at the, yeah. the size of yeah. my hand. The fluorite dwarfs this this yeah. particular. Yeah. Uh, and it's on matrix. And it's on matrix. What a rock! That is <laughs> it's just stunning. Yeah. And the location is. This is Nagar. Nagar. Again. It's Nagar, okay. Hunza Valley, and it's. Um, from Baltistan, Pakistan Good region, heavens. and it it arguably is the finest pink fluorite specimen in the world. Yeah, yeah. Super luster, gemminess, you can see right down in the crystal, yeah. and this incredible Look at that. pink color. Look at that. Yeah. Steve, Thanks you have surprised me more than once today. It's well, wonderful. Well, thank you for yeah. taking the time to come All in right. and see us. We I look appreciate it. I look forward to seeing your exhibit at the main show. Hi, Dylan. Hey, Bob. Good to see you again. You as well. You, you've got some great things here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Another yeah. Tucson. Yeah, right, right. You've got a classic here. I, I love English barites. I really do. There's a lot of them around, but you've got one that just is very appealing. It's got the, you know, the iron oxide dusting, big crystal in the back, doubly terminated, that ends a, sets up a backdrop for all the lovely little crystals that are laid down there. And little, little... Um, Dolomite with it. It's a really, really fine old timer. Yeah. Let's talk about these blue azurites that have great color. Yes. You know, when I first looked at those, I said, oh, Milpias. Yeah, very nice. But they're not. No. No. Tell me about it. They're a new find from Laos, a uh, very small production. Uh -huh. And uh, it's just been trickling out. So uh, this is what you're going to see at the whole show. Wow. Can we? Pull sure. one of those out. The one in the back there looks particularly appealing to me. It's got some nice malachite, azurite contracts, and excellent blue color. Look at that blue color. Let me light that up. Look at that electric blue, and it's from an open pit mine in Laos. Yes, sure. Yeah, sure. And these Jonas uh, tourmalines are are superb anyway. They and, are. Uh, yeah. That is really, huh? That would make any tourmaline collector proud. What a fine piece. This is wonderful. And the setting in the, uh, in the felspar and the quartz in the back, 
Just a really fine example of those three minerals. Boy, that is a honey. You know, yeah, look at that. A gorgeous uh, shatakite color, but laying in there is a wonderful little cluster of primary malachite. malachite. Isn't it? Yeah. Wonderful. That's a great contrast. Yeah. The big ones I've seen are just um, just uh, plunchyite. This is very nice, uh, having a second mineral malachite in there. Really, really good. Yep. What's the You've got a morganite here. Uh, as morganites go, okay, it's a big crystal, good color. Uh, no matrix, but, uh, uh, you know, just a nice morganite. But it's got a history that just blows me away. The provenance. The JP, yeah. uh, this was a gift from Kunz to Morgan. And this is one of the pieces that... Uh, uh, Kuhn's named after J.P. Morgan. Yeah. So for you, the yeah. type of, for the specimen. You've mentioned two names that are phenomenal, well-known in the history of mineralogy in the States, Kuhn's and Morgan. Yes. Morgan a banker, Kuhn's a mineralogist. Beautiful. And this came from where? This came from uh, Mesa Grande, the Himalaya mine. All right, so it's, it's an American. It's a Morganite. California Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Morganite. all right. But the history on this, the provenance, just marvelous. Uh, any Morgan specimen is in high demand yes. among, you know, really knowledgeable collectors. Great. That's an old timer. That is. You've got something recent and from an odd locality. This came out of Nepal this summer. Um, it's an unbelievable aquamarine. Nepal. Yes, with uh, quartz and unbelievable mica as well. That's amazing. Yeah, beautiful trio of minerals, nicely clustered. The color of the aqua is, is tremendous. Yeah, yeah. Any any thought on the the size of the locality or the, and the name of the locality? Nepal, yes. It's, it's Mount Tapalyung, and it's uh, okay. It's one of the highest mountains in the world. It's really? near Mount Everest. Is this one of these things that was dug at like fifteen thousand feet? Above fourteen thousand feet. <laughs> I actually saw the mountain. I took an early morning flight right yeah. along yeah. all the Himalayas, and this the this is right. This is next to Everest. Oh my gosh! So the the size of the mountains, it's. It's mind-blowing, actually. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? And then we have a barrel from Madagascar. Oh, look at that. Look at the color on this. Which they call a lagoon barrel. Ooh. What do they call it? Lagoon barrel. Lagoon barrel. Yep. Why? Well, it looks like the color of a lagoon. Ah, okay. And it doesn't have enough uh, vanadium to be an emerald. Oh, uh, okay, okay. But the color, is, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's magical. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Modified termination, very nice. Yep. Oh, isn't that nice? What a perfect miniature. Look at that. Doubly terminated, slightly zoned, a little darker color on the tips. Perfect positioning of the crystals. Excellent, excellent color. Couldn't be any nicer. And a nice matrix specimen. Oh, isn't that something? Now, let me put a light on that and see what we got in the way of color. Look at the color in that baby. Rich green, beautiful pink, boy, and terminated. Typical tourmaline striations, yep, trigon form. Oh, look at that, look at Lombardi that. Salinas. Boy, that is nice, nice color. The terminations. Yep, perfect termination. Perfect, excited crystal. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bob. Great. You've got some great rocks. Thank you I so really much. really enjoyed looking at them. Yeah, Thank and you. A lot it's of history, fun. a lot of recent stuff. Yep. Way to go. A little bit of everything. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, Bob. Well, hey, good to how's see it you, going? Man. Good to see you. You know, every time I come in this room, I'm, I'm virtually overwhelmed by the quality of what you've got in your cases. Thank but you. Given the limits of time and, and uh, footage, let's say, yep. I've selected three specimens I'd like you to talk about. Sure, sure. I know the Milpia azurites are quite common now because yeah. of the big vein they hit, but you've got one here that's yeah. more than a little unusual. I really like it because of the malachite. Right. You can see it there, and let me go ahead and pull that out. Okay. It looks like AstroTurf almost. It's wonderful, yeah. <laughs> I just Normally the, the azurites are all kind of clustered together and you can't see the dis distinct crystals. But this one is wonderful because it has these individual clusters of crystals on a very, very showy 
beautiful plate. Yeah, yeah. just wonderful. love the color and, yeah. and the isolation of the crystals. I mean, you could hope for larger ones, but Thanks. other than that, I mean, it's a, for me, it's a perfect specimen. Yeah, so this is just a jewel. I love this. We just featured this on our Palo Gems uh, Mineral uh, Web News. All right. And uh, it's a new find from Nepal. Uh, we have uh, this material, and it's just a wonderful Japan Law Twin Quartz. Yeah, you see that right there? Yeah, With yeah. a regular, yeah, you know, quartz that. right there on the that. side. So I just yeah. love the, the fact that you get the combo, and it's so aesthetic. Copper is copper, but this little rascal from Michigan has a history. It does. It's from the Roebling Collection, Washington Roebling in the uh, National Museum. So, uh, you know, it's a, a pretty old piece, you know. Uh, I wouldn't be able to date it exactly, but I would guess, you know, it's a, at least, uh, it's you know, 100, 100 years, years old. old. Yeah, yeah, well over 100, well over 100 years, years old. Yeah. So, well, Roebling is the guy who built the Brooklyn Bridge, among other things. So, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that it was in his collection, yeah, has a, it's a really nice provenance. It's a great, the, great provenance. It's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful piece. it's very piece. nicely crystallized. Yes, yeah. I love the crystallization here, and the patina is wonderful. A lot of people don't understand yes. coppers. I actually happen to personally love coppers, think yeah. they're yes. underappreciated. Um, this one has that dark, dark patina, right. which you know you can only get really from aging. You you yes. can't yes. you can't fake that or well, anything. It, it, it would lose some appeal if it looked like a shiny penny. We're gonna start with this specimen, another old classic. It's a hematite. Oh, look at from that. Switzerland. Isn't that sweet? And so that's a yeah. really, really sweet piece. Great luster. Really beautiful large size. Yeah, beautifully positioned on the matrix. A little bit of felspar with it. And just sitting right on top, you know, yeah, which is really yeah. nice. And those rosettes uh, normally are not that large, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, met him, met him, most of them, or a lot of them anyway, are a little on a dull side. Yeah. That, that's really it's nice really and lustrous. lustrous yeah. and, uh, this is the $400,000 Shoral. Good heavens. And the reason we say that is because we put 150 feet in the Esmeralda mine, and we hit one uh, pocket, uh, and this is the only tourmaline that was in the pocket that was terminated. We hit a lot more shorals, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're easy, and, uh, yeah, for some reason they're yeah, easily uh, damaged. Yeah, they're easily yeah. damaged. We got some really nice quartz crystals. I didn't bring them with us, so it's just a joke. Here's a very wonderful Uchu Chakwa silver. I love it. It's very aesthetic, I think. Oh, nice. Yeah, just great. a cute little guy, yeah, just wonderful, and it's yeah. got the little acanthites on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, really nice yeah, right. shape. Yeah. Very, very nice the little crystals on it. So and a nice. V twin of Chrysoberyl nice. from yeah. Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, really good, uh, pretty much 360, and a nice color and everything. Just yeah. a wonderful, wonderful specimen. Great, great twinning. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. This is a. Uh, Wonderful rutilated quartz. It actually has sort of a funny story. I was in Tokyo uh, visiting some friends and I happened to see a, a little rock shop. And uh -huh. I walked in and this had been sitting on the shelf. I asked, it's been sitting on the shelf for 20 years. Oh, for gosh. Sakes. And so I negotiated and bought the specimen and, that's, that's and brought it back. That's from Bahia locality? Yeah, Bahia locality. Yeah, okay. And it's a, just a really, really beautiful specimen. It's really loaded with root tube. Yeah, oh, and gosh. all the terminations are pretty perfect and yeah, just got yeah, really yeah, nice yeah, luster. Yeah. And this is a wonderful calcite specimen oh with my, a wonderful oh, look at, look emerald. At that, look at that. Yeah, look it's a that. dissolution emerald, which is super rare. I've actually never seen one before until uh -huh. I saw this specimen. Now what's what's the mine? Uh, Lapita. Lapita. Where? Yeah. where is it's that? in Colombia. I mean, is it near uh, yeah, Muzo? Yeah, I think it's or? it's near Muzo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, it's just one of the mines I didn't get in. Really, really nice calcite, as you can see here. All terminate. All perfect. You know, a lot of this material does not come out that way, especially yeah. the calcite. That that makes it. So right and there. that makes that, it right there. Just, it's like a little sail ship. Yep. <laughs> so. Back to Brazil here. Ah, I recognize that. Yeah, that's a herderite yes. on Matrix. Yes. That's a fantastic piece. Is that is that Virgin de Lapa? It's a Virgin de Lapa yes, okay. with the uh, okay. with the mica. Okay. And uh, you know, it's yeah. beautiful nice purple. Color. Nice color. Got a little yeah. bit of the yellow tips on each side. Doubly terminated. Yep. Lustrous. Lustrous. Very so, sharp. Yeah, it's just a wonderful one. I love the aesthetics of it. Yeah. And this is the last specimen I'm gonna finish with. We're gonna go back in time again. Oh look at that. At least a hundred, maybe hundred and fifty years. I asked some of the Germans oh, if they knew yeah. exactly and they From weren't Ems. sure, but Badems uh, yeah. Wonderful pyromorphite. 
Oh. And it just looks like a flower. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it's got a stem it, and everything. There's been a lot of those out in the old days, but most of the, the pyromorphites were more or less parallel clustered. Exactly. This, this, this one really nice opens up. It's yeah. a burst. I just love it. You've got some good treats there. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing. Yeah, yeah thank thanks. you guys. Good to hey see Bob, you it's again. great to see you. All right, you know when I came in your room, I saw your new volume. Yes, thank of you. Minerals. I think that's true. It, this specimen is how big was that? That thing was this big, and I've always considered this the best specimen I ever sold. Really? Yeah, I, I, it's unique in the world. It's very well known, very famous. It's pictured many places, and I just thought it deserved to be on the cover yeah. of yeah. Volume Four. We this is the fourth in a series of volumes that we do, and. All the photos in here are specimens we've sold. Nice. Nothing currently available, it's all archival. And the purpose of it has always been that many of these pieces go into private collections, never to be seen again. Oh, yeah, and this way, yeah. every collector can, can get to share in the beauty yeah. of these pieces. Yeah, this is Chinese. Yeah, this is a, a very well-known piece. It was on display here at the U of A last mm. year. Mm -hmm. It's a Spinel twin with Bornonite. Yeah. Down there, I see a cast that just is remarkable. Can we pull that Yeah, of course we can, yeah. Chance? This is Moroccan. It's a locality that's well known for these box epimorphs. Uh -huh. But this one I like so much look because you've got this beautiful opening that's completely crystallized. Yeah, yeah, and if yeah, you look yeah. all the way down in there, you'll see almost stalactites of quartz. Oh, for gosh sakes, yeah. And yeah. I'm not 100% sure what this is replacing. Maybe calcite. It's hard to say, none of them ever have the original mineral oh, yeah. there, but it's just such a beautiful form. Did they ever find fluorite there by any chance? Uh, I don't know if this locality could be fluorite. Modification. Yeah. Hmm. And you know, I guess you, you, know, you would know better than I would, those old English ones, the old yeah. English box oh, epimorphs. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is just sure. a variation on that yeah. from Morocco. Yeah. There's a specimen here you've got that I think has tremendous history. Yes. It's a fluorite. Well, we had this, this very unusual pink fluorite and we had it labeled just as Switzerland yeah, because we didn't know much about it. Nice little pink cubes in there. And yesterday in walks Eric Asselborn, okay. very well known right. for his Eric. expertise yeah, really in knows. alpine minerals. He really knows. And he walked up the case too. and he said, Stuart, that fluorite is the, from the original pocket of fluorites that were found in 1866, Good the thanks. first recorded fluorites ever found in Switzerland. You're kidding. And he said they're very identifiable Look with this that. clear modified cubes with the pink centers. Wow. He said maybe there are, he knows of maybe 30, 40 pieces in museums in mm -hmm. Europe, and he knew right away. He walked in and said, Isn't no, that so that's the one. This piece is from a very well-known pocket. It's very old, and it's got the Malachite replacing azurite, right. but what's special is this coating of sugary quartz that you see. Yeah, isn't that lovely? And there have been, you know, a few of these around over the years, but this is clearly all from one pocket. Yeah, that's an, that's an old timer though, isn't this, it? This piece, we've got a nice old label with it from the collector, from Schumacher, but what I like most is it says here, for, it was bought from Airmen in 1941, in Look December 1941, things. for $10. Yeah. Wow, yeah. And, yeah. you know, I mean, Martin Airman is clearly every mineral dealer's idol. Yeah. And uh, so it's really special yeah, to have that. Yeah, he was that. going to Africa in the late 1930s for Exactly, yeah. exactly. This so pyrite and hematite from El Bailey <clears throat> is the largest crystal we've ever seen. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you've seen more than I have of these, and I, really, most of them are a tenth of this size. Oh, yeah, I've seen hundreds and yeah. hundreds of these things on, on hematite. Nothing that no. size. No, and it's complete all the way around. Yeah. Euhedral crystal, not, not yeah. a single yeah. damage Perfect. on it. Yeah, Perfect. to get one out that big, yeah. I've never seen it before. Sharp edges, great luster. Beautiful crystal form. Yeah. It's really remarkable, especially I think so. for the size. Yeah, yeah, oh. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, right. This is from China, from Yao Ganji. Okay. And literally, we've probably seen thousands of these. But the association. Not with this color yeah, yeah. and not with this beautiful yeah. association. Great association. Beautiful pair. Yeah, I mean, just it's a, so balanced, the piece. But this color and clarity and glassy surface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think in all the Yao Ganji florets we've seen, there was one other of this color, of this just vibrant greenish blue color. Yeah, this is a jewel, and it is an old timer. The person I bought it from said it had been in a private collection in Europe for about 30 years. Isn't it cute? And he'd been after it for 30 years, and the guy actually sold it, and then he had to chase it down somewhere else. Yeah. But just it's just, look at the gemminess yeah, and the glassiness. Setting. Yeah, the and, setting of that is wonderful. And a perfect isolated yeah. green appetite yeah. from Panascara. Yeah, Panascara produced some 
Ferberites or Wilfermites, yes. whatever we finally yes. decided to call them, and some just marvelous appetites. Yes. And that's a little jewel. It is. Probably if you handed this to just about anybody here at the show except a few people, they would have no idea what this is. Yeah, I didn't know until you told me. It's a the, ver Vereninite? It's a Vereninite from Pakistan. But it's the only known matrix varenonite in the world. Okay, yeah, I've seen some singles. Right, there are about half that. We've size. owned two other singles, and this is over the, over thirty years. We've owned two singles. Herba Boda, who of course is Mr. Pakistan, yeah, has owned yeah, maybe yeah. two others, three others, yeah. and that's it. And this is, this is first of all, this is about twice the size of all the others I've ever seen, yeah, and I've it's on matrix. Yeah. yeah, I've never seen anything that size. And you know, rare never minerals never. are rarely beautiful. I mean, it just yeah. they, they goes yeah. hand in hand. Yeah. This is beautiful. Well, I like it on the Matrix because yes. the, you know the singles I've seen are you know they're attractive and it's yeah. rare. Yeah. And I'm not even sure of the chemistry. I kind of suspect it's a manganese mineral, but it looks like a rhodonite. Just a wild guess. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know that it's related in any way. No. no. Veyronite. And this is actually doubly terminated too. What a piece. Yeah. This is a special piece. You know, yeah. most rare minerals today are kind of tiny. This is right. very showy. It's a yes. good size. Yeah. yeah it's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. No, it's All a right. pleasure. Anytime. Anytime. Good to see you again. Hi, Bob. Yeah, I'm glad you're here at Tucson because whenever you come, you always like to bring something to show us. I've got a you got few. anything this year? I do. I've right. got a Let's few Let's take things. a look. Okay. Let's very, take a look. Good. <laughs> That's yeah. a Moroccan barite. This is what call bathroom rocks. Very, very aesthetic. Wonderful. All the yeah, tips all are perfect, terminated. and it's on Matrix. Yeah, what a piece. You know, Bob, I just Look love that. the artistic side, and yeah. to me that's like a natural yeah, work of art. really showy, and good color throughout, no zoning, just wonderful. This one is a, uh, a Chinese, and a Mongolian helvite. Okay. There's the helvite. But well, what I like about that. this is the matrix. Yeah. The yeah, included quartzes with great. the composition. Yeah, how would you show that? Like that? I think, actually, yeah, like that could that. be. It could be like that. Yeah, yeah. It could be like that. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Yeah. Some minerals, the composition, it it transcends the minerals involved. In other yeah, words, when yeah, the composition right. is yeah. uh, okay, it's a helvite's best. But, yeah. but to me, the quartz yeah, is just yeah, as important right. because of the way it's a spray. It's a very common mineral, and yet the the almost porcelanous appearance of the crystals with a rare, fairly rare mineral makes it even better. I couldn't put it better. I recognize that. That's an old timer. Yep. Yeah, that came out of uh, South America years ago. Rock Courier was the first to bring he these was. out, wasn't he? He brought them out yeah. and they shocked the world. Yeah, there was some question about the uh, color on this that, that it was caused by an organic inclusion, but I don't, I've never read anything about, uh, you know, anything definitive on that. But wonderful pink fluorites from Peru. One thing that does happen to them, and uh, you had mentioned this to me, Bob, yeah. the green cores do tend to fade. So the, the ones that have been protected that still have the green cores, yeah. Yeah. that makes it special. Put your light on there. See. Absolutely. And you can see it's Look prominent green cores. That. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, that, that, the organic idea came from the fact the cores were green. Yeah. Don't know if it was or not. This reminds me... I shouldn't say it, but this reminds me of the golden calcites that used to come out of Baja, California. Oh, right? the ones I used to cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Great? But it's not a calcite. Actually, it also looks, ready for this, imperial topaz. Now, it is obviously yeah. not, oh, look but look that. what happens to that. Yeah. That's one of the finest shelites I've ever seen. Chinese, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't the golden color of that is wonderful. This debuted in the 90s in the uh, Denver show, uh -huh. and a lot of us were shocked by this. We had never mm. seen anything like this, and actually to this day, still haven't seen anything yeah, like I this. Yeah, I haven't seen anything of that color, that, that intense color from China. Yeah, this is an old timer. Yeah. Uh, it's a White Queen Morganite, yeah. a complete yeah. floater. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, we all knew the guy who dug these, Norm Dawson. He was a great guy. Yeah. So, Bob, mm. do you know how you know that it's a White Queen Morganite from California? No. It's surfing. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next thing you know, you're going to tell me there's a shark in the Matrix. No, the shark is over here. Uh, <laughs> you're too much. But that is, that's a sweet one. Complete crystal, perfect, transparent. Lovely color, sharp edges, 
Beautifully positioned on a specimen matrix. Wonderful. This is really nice. Very, very heavy. Nice patina, too. Yeah, it's got a slight yeah, rosy yeah, patina yeah, to it. Yeah. Really terrific. A little bit of matrix Looking on there. Huh. Now, what does it remind you of, Bob? I'm going to give you a second chance because you blew the California surfing barrel. You can whip me one if you want to. I have to, to be tested here. I call, it, is, I call it Medusa. Oh, okay. With the yeah, snakes with over the, the head. The snakes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ugly face, though. Very ugly face. <laughs> yeah, that's a little. Very lovely. ugly face. Is this a silver sulfide up yes. here? Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, really nice. I, I don't think I've ever seen a better, bigger, finer silver with thick wires like this from China. Most of them are pretty anemic looking compared to something like this. That's really sweet. Years ago, there was a, a dealer named Prosper Williams who, uh, who would come to the shows. In fact, he'd come uh, down from Canada and stay at my house, and then he'd come on down to the show. And he told me about these Anganya cuprites. First of all, they're jemmy inside if you're silly enough to want to soak off the malachite <laughs> to expose the cuprite. Yeah. I'm sorry about no, that. No, that's okay. And uh, he told me that when they found these, they had, you know, the crew had gone in and drilled and blasted, and then they have to wait for the gases to clear, and then the second shift comes in. And when that second shift came in, the blast had opened up a wall of calcite, ugly calcite, but on the calcite were these, these cuprite crystals, just clusters and groups all over the wow. place. Wow. And that's why we had quite a flood of these for a while, and now none. But this is exceptional because the, the green is very evenly colored all over the crystal. The, the cuprite is sharp, razor sharp. Very, very nice rock. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. I have been a fan of yours for a long time. I know this, I know you hate this, but I've been a fan of yours. And every month when I get rock and gem, it brings back memories. <laughs> and I just want to applaud you because Rock and Gem Thanks, is a magazine that brings people into the hobby. Yeah. Because I give my Rock and Gems to kids. Good for you. And That's important. the section that is for the kids, the on the rock section is the first yeah, section Lynn, I go to. Lynn does that. Yeah. yeah. And but, and I just want to thank you for okay. that because oh, you know welcome. what? It, it, you've done such a body of work and yeah. I think sometimes you don't go appreciate as much as you should thanks. be. Thanks, and sir. I just want to thank you for that. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks, sir. Very All much. right. Thanks, Appreciate Bob. you showing me your wonderful specimens. It's a great collection. Anytime. All right. Anytime. Thanks. Tucson still, and we've got an exhibit from the Museum of Natural History in London that Alan Hart brought over, and it is an amazing historically documented gemstone. Let's take a look at it. Alan, thanks for being here. Nice Appreciate to meet you. It. Thank you. Pleasure. Tell us about this gem. Well, this is a, a sapphire. This sapphire is unique because it came out of the collection of Sir Hans Sloan. And Sir Hans Sloan actually founded the British Museum. So he was a guy really? that collected rocks, minerals, um, bird skins, herbarium sheets, plants from all over the world. Yeah. And not many people realise that he had about 10,000 minerals in his collection. My goodness. And the part of those was a gem collection. And they used to show these at dinner parties, to royalty, to the yeah. high society. And one of his favourite objects was this sapphire. And we call it one of our great survivors. It's really gorgeous. Yeah, this, this has been in our collections since about 1753, when the British Museum was founded. Uh, Sloan had it before that, and you can see that we have records that we have in the case yeah, yeah. that he paid £43 for it. Um, it's an amazing piece. You look at the colour, it's a beautiful, deep, inky blue. Yeah. Uh, it's 31 carats. It actually was, came out of its mount a few months ago, and we had a look at the stone, and it's actually got a lovely zoning, colour zoning. Really? So all of the inky blue colour is in the actual table of the stone, and the pavilion is colourless. It's oh, quite okay. unusual. All right. So you can see it's an Mogul piece of jewellery, very, very uh, indicative of its time. Yeah, classic for that classic, time. Classic, yeah, yeah. yeah. But sapphires are very unusual in, in Mogul jewellery. So we're thinking that it was once an emerald, uh, and at the time the emerald may have come out, and Sloan has substituted a European rose-cut sapphire in its place mm -hmm. to make what is a unique item of jewellery. Yeah, this it's time. marvelous. This handwritten label, is that part of the museum collection? Yeah. Or was it done before the museum was established? Well, this is that, we call this a blue slip. Every specimen in our collection has a blue slip. 
okay. and that's filed as it came into the museum. So in 1820, when they started the general catalogue, this is where the, all the people who curated this stone wrote on there. So it's actually a history of the stone yeah, while great. it was at the museum. Yeah, you can see there's a picture, we, can, we know who wrote what, and all the details are captured on one, one item of information. Mm, and that's, that's Sir Sloan right there. That's, that's Sir Hans Sloan himself, yeah. very typical British yeah, uh, nobility yeah. of his time. He could have passed for William Penn, for gosh uh, sake. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we always look for pictures, and you can see on the picture he has a lovely brooch uh, holding his scarf well, in place, yeah, not right this there, one. Yeah, right at the bottom. Yeah, but yeah. you can see that many of the collection items they had at the time, uh, it was his collection, so he used to wear them. Mm -hmm. So okay. it, this is a, it's a fantastic yeah. piece of well, a look back at history. Well, for wealthy people to have a natural history cabinet was not unusual. That's right, and yeah. And his cabinet, obviously, hit yeah. the gamut of all scientific things. It's really that's, amazing. That's right. And I think yeah. what's amazing about it is its sheer diversity. Yeah. So the whole yeah. the whole thing, even uh, antiquity material, uh, became the British Museum in 1753. Great, yeah. Now, normally the sapphires are identified as coming from uh, up in the Himalayas, but this is labeled as coming from India. Is Would that still be up in the mountain region where it came yeah, from? Yeah, well, actually, I looked at this stone very carefully. Um, the, the Indian deposits were discovered much later, 1883, so oh, okay. there's only two sources, Sri Lanka or Burma. Right. And when you look at this stone under a gemological microscope, you can see some folded inclusions, like the fingerprint inclusions, right. of, they look right. like flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is really quite indicative of Burmese origin. Oh, okay. So we think it was, a, it was a orig orig originally a Burmese True stone, Burmese, uh, that right. has been cut yeah. and incorporated into yeah. local, local jewelry. Well, it's, it's a marvelous piece. And Any, when anyone? you look at the color, it's amazing. I have to shine my torch on here. Oh, go ahead. The, actually, yeah. the color actually comes that. out. You can yeah. see the pureness yeah. of that. Well, I hope all of all the people viewing this can get to the Museum of Natural History in London because this is just one of many, many, many historically famous pieces you've got. That's right. Well worth seeing. We, we like to think that by showing an item like this, yeah. we, we bring a piece of our collection to the Tucson Great. show yeah. and come and see more. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that started here actually in 1970 when Pete Can came over. Memory? Yeah. And uh, you know he exhibited some things from Cornwall, I think. Yeah, yeah, he had a, yeah. a Cornish, a yeah. Cornish uh, uh, case here yeah. at the museum. We still have the list of what he bought. Oh, the okay. Yeah. That's what started this uh, the international flavor of this show. Yeah. He was the first of the international yeah. curators. Yeah. And, look how and you're right on. Yeah, and you're right on the list. I think yeah. it's great that you're here. Thank you, Bob. So thank you for being thank you here. So much pleasure. Arizona is the copper state, and the mine that probably produced more copper specimens than any other mine in the state is in Bisbee, starting with the Copper Queen in the 1880s. So it's only right that there should be a museum in Bisbee that features some very fine Arizona copper minerals. This is the Bisbee Mining and Historical Museum in Copper Queen Plaza in in uh, Bisbee. It is a Smithsonian affiliate, which means that they get uh, uh, support from the Smithsonian for exhibits and for materials. Uh, the Copper Queen mine was very well known for its calcite bugs, huge caves really, in which very fine calcites could be found. And of course, its best known specimens are azurite, malachite, and copper itself. There is a specimen in the case that surprises me. It's a gold nugget. It doesn't come from the Copper Queen, but it's from the same county, Cochise County, and it's out of the Huachuca Mountains, which are very nearby uh, Bisbee. Bisbee is now closed, unfortunately, but uh, the beautiful thing about it is that the Phelps Dodge that operated the mine did allow miners to collect after they worked, or as long as it didn't interfere with their time and their work, they could collect. So that accounts for the great number of fine Bisbee minerals that are still on the market today. Okay, good. What they do each year here is try and identify the best mineral on display and award it the Lidstrom Trophy. And Brent won it this year. Brent. Welcome, and thank you for exhibiting a wonderful case of minerals. Oh, well, thanks, Bob. Tell us about the specimen that won the trophy, the mimetite. Okay, well, that's a Cobar mine piece from uh, uh, New South Wales, Australia. Yeah, yeah. And I believe they came out in the late 1980s. And uh, okay. there's a second level of the silver mine there. And these things uh, were very attractive. There weren't a lot of them. No, no, not at all. And, you know, as time went on, uh, they became pretty scarce. And I was mm -hmm. able to actually find this one and acquire it. And uh -huh. it's one of the pieces I've always wanted. Yeah, know? how'd you locate it? 
Well, um, I actually uh, knew a dealer who had it. Okay. And I was able to uh, talk him into uh, letting me have it, and uh -huh. the rest is history here. Yeah, great. But I'm a, a, I'm a lead minerals collector. Oh, so, okay. Uh, that, that fits right in. Sure. It's my, it's my passion. <laughs> All right. Every, every good collector has passion. Yeah, yeah. you got to have it. Thanks so much, Brent. Thank you very much, I appreciate Bob. your explaining your minerals for us. Right. Thanks. Thanks for taking the time. Sure. Hi, Brett. Hey, Bob. How are you? Great, Great. to see you again. How are you? Congratulations on having Best in Show exhibit. Well, thank this, you very much. This size. That's wonderful. This guy is quite a collector. I know he spent a lot of time at the Bonito White locality. He's got a Bonito White in here that we'll talk about. Let's talk a little bit about your minerals here. All right. Of course, my favorite in the case is the Larachanite, uh, be only because of my familiarity with Cornwall, and you know, the, I, I spent so much time there, and, and I just love the history of the whole uh, region. But you've got some really super things here, some rare things, uh, the Fresnoite, and the Olmite. Uh, just, you know, pentagonite, wonderful things. Tell me more about how you put this together. Well, thanks. You know, I started with the benitoite, and uh, the idea was to field collect benitoite, and I started trading and selling and trading some more, and mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. I got more interested in the colorful minerals, and benitoite was a great thing to field collect because oh, yeah. it had value, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it enabled me to get into collecting higher end minerals and more colorful things, more rare things, um, but it also allowed me to do it on a budget because yeah, I started yeah, with yeah. something that I found and I etched and Smart. and uh, had a great time with that. Yeah. And uh, it's evolved into this, you yeah, know, I, a I, world of color. And I remember your Bonito White case at the Fresno show. Oh, that was good fun. Yeah, uh, no, that was Turlock, wasn't it? You said you etched the Bonito White? Yes, I do all my own etching. I was okay. taught by a couple fellows that are experts on that. Rick Kennedy and John Beaver have been very helpful oh, okay. with that. Okay. And so, uh, you know, I've, I've done a lot of etching. I enjoy it because it is an art form. And uh, during my first trip to Tucson, I was a speaker at the Crystal Ballroom on the presentation of Bonito White okay. and how to prepare it. And that Very was a good. great honor and Very good. had a great time. So Bonito White's a, a love of mine, but yeah. I, I'm starting to branch out into other things, as you can see. Yeah, is that your favorite mineral, or is there something else here that's your favorite? Yeah, there's a different favorite mineral every week. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. That That's a sign of a good collector. Well, I, yeah. I love that, you know. And, uh, you know, one of my favorites now is, uh, it's the Marshall Sussmanite, because oh, okay. it's new, uh, okay. new species, yeah. and uh, that's a really nice miniature, and yeah. named after a great collector. Good color. And it's yeah. been nice to have here. Um, been very, very fond of the Azurite, the Arsene Sumabite. It's a new acquisition this year. Ah, yeah. Arsene Sumabite is pretty rare. You, uh, you scored full points on rarity? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, that's, that's really a marvelous case. What was your total score out of 100 possible points? Uh, we scored right at 90 points. Good heavens. And uh, that's a real challenge. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, the judges are pretty, pretty uh, persnickety, shall we say? Well, great. they are. Yeah, that's a great, great collection. Well, we're judged on our ability to create a museum display, mm -hmm. which means mm -hmm. it's got to be rare, it has to be well presented, right. uh, it has to be clear and concise. Yeah. Um, everything we do at display and what impresses judging is how you arrange the minerals. You mm -hmm. see the blues kind of have a pattern. Oh, um, yeah. There's a match uh, with the oranges on either side, greens. Yeah, balance. There's yeah. balance, yeah. and that's important. There's right-hand pieces, there's left-hand pieces. Some look good from one side or the other, and, yeah. and so all that comes into play. Yeah. Well, that's a great display. I well, really you. appreciate thank talking you. about it, Brett. Well, thank you very yeah. much. It's a great honor to and be here. And good luck with your mineral, with, with, your, with your wine business. Oh, that's just fun. I like to ferment things, and uh, it's oh. a passion we have. We grow the grapes, and we make the wines at our place. It's nice to work at home, yeah, that's and it's great. especially nice to share them here in Tucson. And I must say that I've enjoyed uh, the occasional wine taste. Just a few. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Brett. You know, Collector's Edge, headed by Brian Lees, is probably the first organization that really developed the technique of opening mines for specimens, doing specimen mining. They're famous, of course, for the Sweet Home operation back in the 1990s. But they really started in the, in the mid-1980s. Uh, 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 he started in 1984. We um, have explored or operated over a hundred different areas around the world and we actually did over 40 mining projects at a very sophisticated level. These specimens in this case are representing 21 
of our mining projects that we've done over the past 30 years. And so we've uh, got some incredible specimens that Brian and his mining crews have been able to harvest from around the world. And uh, all the way from these beautiful Amazonite and smoky quartz specimens, here we have a group of three outstanding specimens showing the rich color, gemminess, and luster of the rhodochrosite rhombohedrons that were found at the Sweet Home Mine. We have a gemstone that's uh, the very finest ever cut from Sweet Home Mine rhodochrosite, the very largest, and uh, just an incredible saturated gemstone. Brian owned the Colorado Quartz Mine for gold from 1996 to 2006. That particular specimen, amongst other really fine crystallized gold, were found at the Colorado Quartz Mine during the period that Brian was operating and was part owner of that particular mine. The Emerald project that we did with Gemfields PLC uh, at the Tejum mine in Zambia. And this one, not only did we provide technical mining assistance uh, for the recovery of these specimens to the, the uh, Gemfields mining crew, but we also uh, were able to prepare these emerald crystal specimens. These emeralds were completely encapsulated within massive quartz, and our laboratory technicians were able to very delicately remove the quartz from around these emerald crystals and expose these tremendously long and gemmy prismatic emerald crystals. You know, Brian owned and operated the Benitoite gem mine in San Benito County, California from 2000 to 2005. And the gem mine is the only commercial source for the rare and beautiful mineral Benitoite. Benitoite happens to be the, the state gemstone of California and it's exceptionally rare worldwide. And so this was a fun project for the Collector's Edge. It was mostly a gemstone project and Brian found some world-class size uh, gemstones from this deposit. You know, one of the more recent projects that our company has worked on is uh, dioptase uh, that we're mining in the Kakaveld Plateau in Namibia. And this is uh, just some fantastic examples. These are shallow prospect pits that are being dug whenever there's a surface expression of, of uh, uh, copper mineralization. And they take an excavator in and follow that copper mineralization in. And we found some incredible dioptase crystals uh, up to uh, uh, 2.5 centimeters in length, the largest individual crystal we have found so far. And uh, just lovely combinations with shatakite, this beautiful light blue color that's re represented in this specimen. We're digging currently crocoite at the famous red lead mine in Tasmania, Australia. Um, for the first time this year, we've really had those out for sale at this Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. And we're just in the initial stages of mining activities at the red lead, so we, we're really anticipating great things to come from our mining efforts there in the future. But this gives you an example of some the gemminess, transparency, and and uh, fine luster that's seen in these in these crocoite specimens. The collector's edge worked with Newmont Mining Corporation at their Twin Creeks Gold Mine from 1999 through 2001. This was one of the more interesting collaborative projects between a very large mining corporation that's known worldwide for their huge gold production and the, the desire to preserve some really world-class mineral specimens. In this case, highly uh, uh, lustrous, bright orange, well crystallized orpiment specimens, some of the finest ever encountered in the world. During the 2014 Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, uh, Brian Lees was uh, awarded the um, American Mineral Heritage Award for field collecting achievements contributing to the heritage of American mineral specimens and that was uh, February of 2014 and we're really proud with all of the work that Brian's done in mining around the world and in particular in the United States that he was recognized for his mining achievements and we, we thank uh, the mineralogical record uh, and, and the other sponsors and voters for this particular award to Brian Lees.
The Lisandro Museum of Lapidary Art from Elmhurst, Illinois, just outside Chicago, always puts a very fine exhibit in the Tucson show. And this year, they brought a really special piece of work. This was done over a hundred years ago in the Orient, and it's a gold-encrusted and gem-encrusted carved ivory elephant. It's, there have been a few of these around, but uh, none any better looking than that one. That's a real beauty. The Lizadro is a, a very, very nice museum because they specialize in lapidary materials, and a visit there is well worth your time. They, they uh, have some superb Chinese carvings, wonderful minerals, in fact, and uh, they just did the new mineral hall within the last couple of years. But this is a particularly fine piece for the Tucson show this year. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Bob. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Oh, it's golly. just so great to have yeah, you here. And this well. It's really You're great. still with GIA. I am. Okay. It'll be 34 years in March. Oh my goodness. And I'm the director of the Lidicote Gemological Library and Information Center, Good named in honor of Mr. Lidicote. Yeah, right. I'd like to tell you about our case. Yeah, this is historically important. Thank let's, you. let's take a look. Thank you. It's the uh, GIA Library and the Geoliterary Society, and we wanted to focus on India as such an important source of diamonds. Sure. Historically. And we're going to start with this figure, Tavernier, Jean Baptiste Tavernier who lived in the 1600s okay. and traveled to India. It's really amazing what he did, because oh, he yeah. spent 36 years traveling throughout India, Turkey, Persia, East Asia. Amazing, brave man. <laughs> you think of doing that on horseback, yeah. all by himself. Over here on the left, we have a map of India showing on the blue the path of where he traveled throughout India. Wow. And on the right, we can see those features in India if you look under the letter R, you'll see Golconda, and oh, okay. that he Very came famous. to realize. Very famous. So important yeah. for yeah. major historical diamonds, yeah. and we're going to take a look at those. Good. How do we Good. know about that? We know about it from his writings. Okay. We have his first edition okay. book mm -hmm. from his six voyages to India. That one was 1676. And the plate on the left shows the diamonds that he sold to the King of France. Amazing. The book on the left is the English edition. Okay. One year later, and the plate the plate that we've opened to shows some of those famous diamonds that he found mm. and brought back to Europe. Mm. In the upper left hand corner you can see the great picture the diamond, the great mogul. Right. We have a yeah, replica here. It here. Yeah. It's a two hundred and seventy seven carat stone. Yeah. Another famous diamond in the upper right hand corner is this one, the Florentine. Oh, okay. We see it first in its rough. Yeah, isn't it slightly yellow? Yeah, very yellow. Yeah, very. Okay. Uh, we would call that a fancy yellow. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fancy yeah. yellow diamond. Great cut that you see depicted in that upper mm. in that plate. Yeah. In our plate, if we look at the upper left-hand corner, we find the replica that we show here, the 116 karat Tavernier blue. Okay, that was the original blue. That stone. was the original okay. blue rough. Then it was cut to 68.9 carats and became the French blue, and that's what he's wearing in oh, his okay. cravat. Okay, and that was stolen during the French Revolution? That's right. Disappeared? Disappeared, and okay. when it pops back up again, it's been recut again. Oh boy. Now it's 45.52 carats, and it is the Hope Diamond. Okay. We haven't known that for sure throughout time. No. It's been speculated, yeah. but then important gemological research has happened in recent years right. to tell us First, a mold was found oh, in okay. France, ah. but then they were able to take that mold, study it, study the mm. current hope, mm -hmm. which is at the Smithsonian, yeah, yeah. and realize that indeed the hope okay. had come from the French blue, which came from the Tavernier okay. blue. This, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank Donna, you. thanks so Thank much. You so I'll much. see you at the library. Yes, you will. Good. Okay. Right. Now, last year we did uh, a shot on the uh, Hoppel uh, collection that's being offered again by the Heritage Auction people in Dallas. And here's another example of what's in that collection. It's a phenomenal collection, really. Very, very large. And this year, they're, in May, they're offering this beautiful native gold from Kalgoorlie, which is in Western Australia. It's quite a remarkable piece. I'd love to know how it was found, because it doesn't look like it was dug out of rock. It looked, might have been found by a metal detector. Uh, another fine gold here, of course, from California. 
And uh, the hemimorphite over there is for the locality, it's really quite exceptional. It's from Mapami, which is very famous for its hemimorphites. And that's got a very nice light uh, patina of uh, iron oxide that gives it that yellowish uh, hue. Very, very nice. In this lower shelf, there's a specimen that I think is quite remarkable. It's, it's black. I love black minerals. A lot of people don't. But this is an exceptional piece of uh, calcasite from Africa, South Africa. The crystals are very, very fine, an excellent, excellent uh, specimen. This is an example of the violet or purple credite that was found uh, originally in Mexico and now comes from Kazakhstan. The uh, Mexican material was first really not discovered, but really revealed when Paul Desatels was down there, and he was given a specimen of this mineral in a miner's shack when there was very little lighting, and yet when he handled it, he said, oh, this is credite. And the reason he could say that was because the crystals are so sharp that he could feel the sharpness of the crystals and realized what it was. And this has those same very, very fine, sharp crystals, excellent color, a different locality, again, Kazakhstan, but a re really remarkable specimen for the mineral. The Hopple collection also had a nice variety of, of very popular things like the cerusite from Sumeb and the azurite from Bisbee, a very fine, a bright dioptase from Africa. But the specimens that caught my eye are down in this shelf, uh, this hydroborosite. That's a, that's a relatively uncommon mineral. And uh, it, some of it was found in England, but nothing of the quality that this specimen has. That's very, very fine. Wonderful crystal groupings there. And just behind that is uh, one of my favorites. I've had the fortune of digging there a couple of times in the Walla Walla Mountains where the red burls come from. This was mined by Rex Harris and his crew and uh, it's a very, very fine positioned gem red burl in the um, rhyolite. Uh, the color on that is due to the manganese content. But it's a rare mineral for burl, and uh, that's a very, very fine example of the specimen. You know, everybody who lives in the Los Angeles area is very fortunate to have the Los Angeles County Natural History Museum. It has a collection of California minerals, of course it's worldwide too, because I know they have the Mark Bandy collection there, which uh, represents a lot of Bolivian things, African things, but they have very, very fine California minerals. In this case, at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, is a great example of that. The variety of minerals that have come out of California are just quite remarkable. Uh, of course, most famous probably is Benitoite from San Benito County, and there's a superb faceted stone and spe crystal specimen there. Uh, few people realize that California also produced things like jade, nephrite jade, jadeite jade, turquoise, wonderful cutting rough. Um, the coast of California has suffered great pressures and crustal movements, and it's that kind of metamorphosism that has created some of these specimens. Uh, everybody knows about California's earthquakes, of course, and they play a role, a somewhat role, in creating specimens like that. Another massive mineral that is seldom known from California is lapis. Lapis we think of as having come from Afghanistan, but California has produced some very large and fine blue lapis from a deposit in the Los Angeles area. One of the most odd specimens, I think, in this case is the gold nugget. And that's a recent find, if you can believe that. It's over three ounces, 3.2 ounces, and it was found in the San Gabriel River. Well, that, that runs right through Los Angeles County. And whoever found this really made a remarkable discovery. I suspect there'll be a lot of folks digging in the sands of the San Gabriel River now after this specimen surfaced. It's a three, over three ounces, as I mentioned. It's an odd shape, really. It looks like it's really been beat up in its travels down the riverbed but uh, it, it should really be considered most rare and remarkable at this time. For gems, 
the spodumenes, the kunzites from California are just remarkable. They're rivaled only by the, uh, the kunzites that have come out of uh, Afghanistan in the last several decades. There are two localities represented here. Uh, the faceted stone is uh, from one locality and the large crystal from another. So they do represent the best of California's kunzites. We seldom think of diamond as being something from other than South Africa or India, but California has produced some very, very nice diamond crystals. They're not gemmy appearing. They, they, you know, there may be little gemmy areas in them, but these are from Trinity, Trinity County and very, very fine as an example of a diamond. This, this little diamond is, is from El Dorado County and is a gem crystal. Uh, they aren't large, that's a little over a carat, but for California, pretty slick. You know, the Mineralogical Association of Dallas, or the very appropriately named MAD group, <laughs> they're mad about minerals, uh, always puts in a spectacular case at the Tucson show. This is a group of collectors who very, have very strong taste in fine minerals, and they all get together and decide what they show each year. And this case is no exception to the high quality that they always put into the show. Very, very fine things ranging from rhodochrosite on down. There's gem crystals in there. There's a wonderful Uro Preto Topaz, for instance. Uh, they have a very unusual rhodochrosite right in the center. That I, can't tell, I can't even tell you what it is. Some sort of a creature coming out of the ground. But the, the MAD group is very supportive of the Perot Museum in Dallas, very strong supporters of that, and they also very strongly support the Tucson Show with one of the better displays each year. Morning, Rob. Good morning, Good to Bob. see you. Thanks. We are in an entirely different setting here at the 60th anniversary of the Tucson Show. Normally, and back in the old days, we just had a straight line of cases of the Tables. exhibits, and then, you know, aisle by aisle by aisle of dealers. This is remarkable. It, it's like a gem and jewelry and mineral shop now. You know, Munich, the Munich Show is, um, I'm going to say, it's more European, more stylish, right? Right, right. And they're trying to bring some of that over here. Yeah. So the black drapes, the black carpet, it just presents a better feel. Oh, it's also marvelous. more comfortable yeah. to walk on. Yeah, the show has done a great job yeah. of upscaling yeah. it all. It really is fine. And you've done a good job Thank with you. it. Thank you. Thanks, you, Rob. You want to see a yeah, few of the... Yeah, let's look at some minerals. A few yeah. of the new pieces yep. we have here. So it's your basic ram's horn gypsum, but yeah. it's a double. That's a real hook. And it's very sturdy. Yeah. yeah. Where's that from? This is Morocco. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Yeah, I never saw anything like that down in the caves of Mexico. That's really yeah, sweet. Yeah. So we save this for the main show because the public is very attracted to it. Yeah. That's a fairly large Himalaya mine terminal. I guess it is. Yeah, I've I've collected there. I never saw anything that big. That's really something. Yeah, it's actually. Any, have any idea when that came out of the ground? Uh, this was in the Bill Larson era. In oh, okay. The, in the late okay. 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was actually in their company collection for many years. Mm -hmm. Doubly terminated, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a Swiss Gwendal, of course, and what I find remarkable is the combination of normal prism quartz, right. your basic right. open Gwendal, and a closed Gwendal. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. piece. Three different forms. I always wonder what was going on in a pocket like that in the way of pressure and temperature to get, you know, such a variety of forms. It's a marvelous crystallized gold. Sure. But it's the locality. It's from Boise County, Idaho. Yes, it is. You know, Yes. That's really wicked. The Those Belshazzar were, mine or Belshazzar mine, I've never heard of it before. They were found, I think, five or six years ago okay. uh, by actually one of the mineral collectors huh. uh, in our community, ran into the mining company and found they had specimen golds there and was allowed to bring them to market legally. That's wicked. Just, just you know, so beautiful. This is from the Pedernera mine, but it's old Pedernera. It's not from the last decade or oh, so really? of production. Okay. Yeah. There, we can turn it around for the camera. Look at that. Gee whiz. It has remarkable luster, and the color is unusual as well. Mm. It looks like it has a bluish-green tip and mm -hmm. then, then sort of rose down through the shaft. Yeah. yeah pink down in here. So the funny thing is, I actually sold this at Tucson back in the mid-90s. Uh -huh. It was the most expensive rock I'd ever sold at Tucson show 
20 years ago, yeah. almost. I can't believe that. <laughs> An expensive rock, it, really. It, it was, uh, <laughs> at the time, having a mineral worth more than my car was rare. Yeah, this looks kind of familiar. You had some of these at the Westward Look, but this is quite exceptional. And then where is that from? I did. This is from the Dion Mine. It's it's actually a, a commercial fluorite mine in oh, rural China. Okay. And I did have a number of them at the Westward Look, but this was my best piece. I saved it to put out here. And these things were found in two pockets in about March and May. Mm. The rounded faces of the octahedrons are really unusual. And it, these little tiny grooves, actually, the little, they look like modification faces, but they're not. They're, they're the grooves in between the faces. Have you ever seen curved fluorite so large? No, no, not at all. No. I've only seen small ones little from New Mexico. Things, yeah, but yeah. this is really quite exceptional. Yeah, so these, this Good is the color. mine that produced those octahedrons and the white quartz for, okay. for years and okay. years. Yeah. It's been producing specimens for a decade, and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, mm. something totally new. That's the only really amazing colorful new find from China this year. It's, it's an off year. Mm -hmm. well, Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Rob. The theme of the Tucson show this year is diamonds, gold, silver, and gems. This case contains silver specimens from two major collections, Bill Larson and Gene Myron. And most of the specimens in here are from Kongsberg because I think they represent Gene Myron's uh, wish to represent his birthplace. He was actually born in Kongsberg, so there's quite a few Kongsberg pieces here. But there are pieces from Germany and from South America, and uh, one particular piece I like is on the back shelf. Uh, it's because I used to own it. It's that big hook uh, in the center. I found that specimen in a bushel basket that the fella had picked up in a house that was being wrecked. And uh, he knew it was silver, but he didn't know really what it was worth. And uh, I wanted to buy it, and he agreed. He had other minerals, but his, they were colorful, and his wife had them in flower pots with flowers. And so she didn't want him to get rid of those. But this one had no color, so she said, okay, you can sell it to him. So I bought it for the huge sum of $75. And of course, Gene paid a little more than that when he acquired it. Anyway, silver is of itself the most spectacular one of the most spectacular of the metal minerals because it forms these marvelous herringbone patterns and hooks and curves and curls they're just marvelous you get the ram's horn effect and uh, silver has been the mainstay of the mining industry for well since at least 900 AD when it was discovered in Germany so this is really a truly remarkable case of minerals, and I'm sure any collector seeing this would love to have their pick of what's in this case. Here we are at the Tucson show with two people who have done so much for our hobby, and they entered a case in the, for the Desertels Trophy, and by golly, they won. Jim and Gail Spann. They are two of the super people from Dallas that everyone loves. Thank you, Thank we'd, you. We'd love to have you talk a little bit about the case. How did you get the idea to enter for the Desertel Trophy? Oh, I think that we uh, we just love to put exhibits in. I, this, that kind I of, know. this kind of forced us into yeah. um, really thinking hard about what we wanted okay. to put in for an exhibition case okay. this year and for a competition. We uh, wanted to uh, make a statement also in that not everything has to be glitz and glitter. Right. That there's a lot of really um, uh, sharp, smart minerals, mm -hmm. and uh, the, whether they be black uh, right. uh, minerals oh, or even good white, for you. in a variety of different yeah. rarities. So we mix good. it up and yeah. put together a case that doesn't have a lot of tourmalines. There's only one in there. Yeah, but it's and, got great uh, balance, great variety. Yeah. Jim, do you have a favorite specimen? In well, here? you know, it's interesting. I have uh, several of my favorites are in here. Uh, it almost depends on what day you ask me the question. Oh, okay. Uh, my favorite uh, today is this Millerite uh, from uh, you know, New I York was going to question you about the that. Sterling mine. That's, yeah, that's, that's a, a really, really old timer. It is. It Boy. came out around 1880. We had the. Uh, legacy and the labels right back to the original owner. It turned out he was the captain of the mine. He managed huh. the, the mine in the mid-1800s. Uh, yeah. His name was Cox with an E, and he was actually the founder of what is today the largest mining engineering association in the world. Really? And that was uh, one of his pieces that uh, came out. Well, I know you have a very high interest in the provenance of specimens very as well so. as, the one, you know, you love their, them for their beauty, but the provenance is important to both of you. Yes. And, uh, Gail, what's your... 
favorite well, today. <laughs> there's, I'm gonna do two, okay, but okay. the tripod uh, propeller, as I call it, oh, which yeah, is the aquamarine. Yeah. And the reason is that I had seen it and dreamed one day of owning it, and hmm. eventually it came before me. And Jim and I uh, both had fallen in love with it. So yeah. that's always just been one of my favorites. Good, good. How that's do you negotiate good. to buy a piece when everybody in the world knows she'll pay anything to get it? Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Which was not, no, not necessary. And my second is this copper down here at the bottom. The copper skull, as we call it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I just yeah, fell in yeah. love with that, yes. Yeah. And Was that in the... Uh, auction. auction. Yeah. It was in the auction, yeah. and it was on the cover, and I thought that just really hits home with yeah. me. Yeah. And so we uh, we got it, yeah, and I'm I know really happy to have it. A lot of people have come up and said to me, "I know that piece. I love it." <laughs> yeah, it's already famous. Which of these specimens, if you can tell us, which of these specimens was the most difficult for you to obtain? To obtain? Yeah. I mean, oh, uh, for me. Well, you mentioned the propeller up there that you saw it. You didn't. You dreamed yeah. about it. And that no, may be it. I'm going to say for me it was the phacelliite. Oh, okay. Because okay. I had to pry that out of Dan Weinrich's fingers uh -oh. <laughs> to get that. But uh, we had gone, and I asked him at his home one time, can I see my phacelliite? Uh, and he said, your phacelliite. Uh, and I said, please, my phacelliite. And he gave it to me, <laughs> put it in my hand, and I said, hello, little phacelliite. One day you shall be mine. Yes, we're talking about this case with all your great specimens. But there's another display that you brought here. I did. We did. That's very personal. Yes. Let's go look at it. Okay. In January of this year, I um, had a double mastectomy for breast cancer. And it changed my life and it changed my appreciation for people and for many things. And so I was thinking about an exhibition case that Jim and I could put in. And a couple of nights before we came, I said, let's put in a tribute to breast cancer survivors and do pink. And so this is what we came up with um, as a great tribute. And it's, it's been a huge success because so many people have come and talked to me about being a survivor yeah. of breast cancer. It's been amazing how many have had similar experiences mm -hmm. that you would never know yeah. and have kept quiet yeah. to themselves. And, and I get the sense that many of them almost feel relieved that they've had a chance to share that with folks and say, yes, me too. And, yeah. uh, well, uh, they, they often say, welcome to the sisterhood. Oh, well, I admire your courage and I admire your you. support. Thank here. you. It's yeah. wonderful. Thank it's, you very it's much. A very, very significant challenge for both of us, for sure. Sure. And uh, we, a lot we think of brave this is a great people. way to bring attention to the, uh, to the disease to, and having yeah. to. Yeah, and there's a need for that kind of publicity. Yeah. There actually is. It's wonderful. And, um, yeah. A lot of people are very shy about talking about it, yeah. but yeah. I believe in education and prevention if possible. Early detection yeah. is yeah. huge. Well, so, you've done, luckily well, you've I done a great thing early. here. You really okay. have. Thank you. This case at the show is a superb example of what Mon Mier had in the way of gold and silver. Beautiful leaf gold from California, beautiful silvers from several different places in the world, Kongsberg, Germany, and uh, Michigan. And most remarkably to me, is the platinum nugget that is in the lower part of the case. Next to it is a wonderful Venezuelan uh, gold crystal. So there are very, very fine specimens in this uh, selection. And uh, this collection was valued at about $7 million when it was donated to the University of Arizona Mineral Museum. And that really gave the museum the visibility and the high resolution uh, value that it needed. And with this collection, they have been able to strengthen the entire museum situation there at the university, so that now it represents really the cornerstone of the state. And uh, if you ever get a chance to come to the Tucson show, make sure you make a side trip over to the university, it's easy to find, and uh, see the collection that is on display there. It is superb. So, Wayne, you and I have known each other for... Long time. <laughs> you know what's going on, over 30, 40, years 40 years or something years. like that's that? Right, Good that's grief. Right. <laughs> but this is so different from what I remember yep. every time I see you at the show. You've got your booth rearranged beautifully. It's more like a wonderful mineral store than a booth at a show. It's we really great. Top-notch decorators that do this, of course. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My wife, wife. And, yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. Lois. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. All, 
Yeah. Yeah. Pulled together and yeah, get it done. Good. Yeah. Axonite from uh, the polar yeah. euros, yeah. and yeah. This, this, these are some of the largest and finest axonites that have ever been oh, found. Yeah. They're really and they're simple. sharp. They're really. Yeah. It's a yeah. low symmetry crystal, but it so it exhibits these really sharp knife edges, and often they're nicked and chipped and yeah. damaged. Yeah. But Easily this one damaged. is yeah. absolutely in perfect condition. You know, there's a lot yeah. of azurite right here at the right. show, but I haven't seen one from this locale. Yeah, from Mount Hope in Australia. Yeah. That's enough, you know, that's, that's, that's comparable a, that's to anything that's wonderful. found here yeah. in Arizona wonderful when rose. it's from Australia. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. A very nice, uh, classy specimen from an old locality. Probably about, was mine maybe 40 years ago. Okay. This mine is no longer active, uh, so it must be at least that old. Yeah, this is Carlton. I, that's why I go to mine. I can't even really, say it's kind of a formula for <laughs> Really God's rare sake. to find it in any kind of crystal structure. Generally, they're just massive. But it's basically a, a calcium, I think calcium. Sodium, sodium calcium, sodium, potassium, silicate. silicate. Hydrous okay. silicate. Yeah, man, that's, from, that's from Mount San Hilaire, yeah, which is Mount famous San for its rare species. Rare species. And that's one, one of the rare, rare ones, one, yeah. especially in crystal form. Yeah, you don't find yeah, many crystals. Yeah, These are very, very <laughs> old specimens. Yeah, that's even older and, than I am. And the color of it is very characteristic. Yeah, they call it yeah. chesolite. Because yeah. it's altering to malachite. It's azurite, but it's altering to malachite. Yeah, so yeah. you get this sort of blue gray or uh, blue green color, which is characteristic of the specimens from Chesley. But this is a nice knob with very large yeah, crystals. And it's on matrix. And it's on matrix. That's now. unusual. On, yeah. yeah. So this one was purchased almost 12 years ago. Yeah. And then more recently brought back onto the market, but yeah, that's a twin crystal cassiterite yeah. on muscovite. That's yeah. that's a very very fine. In the locality of China. 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 Yeah. That's uh, there's been a lot of Melpitas uh, yeah. azurites yeah. around, yeah. but yeah. I've never seen anything like this one. Oh, look never at that. ever. Mm. Yeah, it's just marvelous. What a specimen! It's a floater, no attachment, no matrix, just a nice, and yeah. it's got some. A lot of the bigger specimens are perfectly flat. Yeah, At least yeah this, this one has, has great some character. contours yeah. and some nice yeah. character. Well, I've certainly handled a lot of Milpias things, mm -hmm. thanks to my son. But uh -huh. yeah, this, some is, wonderful this ones. is remarkable. Yeah, it is that. And it's, it's really a, a fine, large cabinet. Yeah. Museum yeah. quality, That's no museum. question about That's it. That's true. A lot of people uh, like the, the ones from there that are on the Malachite. And oh, this certainly look is at one that. of the yeah. really yeah. super yeah. ones on Malachite. Isn't that delightful? Yeah. My goodness. Beautiful velvet malachite mm -hmm. background. Two-inch crystal here, and another crystals. larger one there. Mm -hmm. A group of crystals, but the contrast between the malachite and azurite yeah. is yeah. Makes, perfect setting. Makes it pop. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No damage. No just beautiful. damage. Just absolutely perfect. Yeah. I even have a third thing. Really? That you might be. <laughs> I can hardly Speaking wait. of things that just came out of the ground, this one just came out of the ground about three months ago. Okay. And it's from a brand More new azurite? area in no, 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 no <laughs> brand new area in California. As you well know, I'm a specialist in oh, gold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, this was found just a month ago yeah. in El Dorado County. Yeah, Wayne knows more about California gold than anyone else. That I it's know. been sort of a specialty Look of mine, but isn't that, that something? Basically, oh. came out of the ground just like that. Uh, with no restoration, oh. no nothing to it. Just a marvelous yeah. elongated octahedron, yeah, almost an inch Beautiful. and a quarter long, Jeez. and it's three dimensional all the way around. 360 needs to be on a rotating platform. Yeah, but yeah, for its yeah, size, yeah. I can't think of any specimen that has more yeah. character yeah. and beauty than that one. And I mean, you've handled thousands of I've California handled, goals. And plus, I've seen go, uh, crystallized gold specimens from all around the world, and yep. this one's right okay. up there with the best, if not Gee. the best. What yep. a piece. Marvelous. Absolutely superb. So that's all I have. <laughs> oh, gee. I'm disappointed. <laughs> okay. No, that all was right. great. Thanks Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the dealer moves from show to show across the country. Their minerals in tow. It's tough to make their money flogging rocks across the land. Reach out to help your dealer with some money in your hand. Pity the dealer. Set up, tear down again, aching muscles. In the heat and in the rain. Running up the mileage on their beat up cars and vans. So hard on their bodies, every woman and man. 
the dealer The trouble and the strife Oh, the dealer They have the toughest life It's so stressful The money that they make Weighs on their conscience Huge profits that they take At the end of the day They eat the finest foods and wines It's a way to ease the guilt That plays upon their minds Oh, the dealer The trouble and the strife Oh, the dealer They have the toughest life Pity the dealer They have to keep the best Oh, the dealer Sells the seconds to the rest The guiltiness weighs heavy The burden is immense Their bank accounts are shocking The self-loathing is intense Oh, the dealer The trouble and the strife Oh, the dealer They have the toughest life Their mansion back home is a refuge for their souls And a drive out in the Cadillac partially consoles Fondling their treasures alone down in the vault They are still just people, their wealth is not their fault What will the market bear? Oh, the dealer. What price is really fair? Plagued by bulging pockets in their personal hell. Stuck with high-priced specimens that will never sell. Oh, the dealer. The trouble and the strife. Oh, the dealer. They have the toughest life Hug a dealer They've really got it rough Encourage them For their lot in life is tough It'll take a lifetime To sell us our selection For ten cents on the dollar They'll buy back our collections Oh, the dealer The trouble and the strife for oh, the dealer They have the toughest life Oh, the dealer The trouble and the strife Oh, the dealer They have the toughest life